Okay, no longer, by no further ado, here comes Brother Steve Cook.
Projects Oil Company. Yeah. And they empower Africans in a 49%, 51% uh, gas station proposition all throughout Africa. Brother, who's in Africa, you may have seen the Caltex connection. Yeah, that's something, that's the brother right in D.C. who perpetrated that. The Black Republican connection. Whatever the fuck a Republican is. <laughs> I am the what these left, right, Republican, Democrat, Communist, Capitalist, all oh, bullshit. <laughs> all of this bullshit. It just ain't about none of it. It's just diverse. A bunch of diverse. To keep you away from certain information. So, uh, sister says to me that uh, they're really tired of hearing this conspiracy thing. And the people need jobs. The people need to have somebody go out there and do something. Now, I've seen the people do many things. <laughs> And I've been confused about much of what I see the people do because much of it doesn't seem to be geared or focused at what we know to be the core of negativity. Yeah. If you want to know or why you should be here tonight, it's because brother stands against the core of negativity. This is a pursuit of the penetration of all that we think is unjust and unfair to our race since it has shown up on the planet. It has an accumulative negativity and we call in the no do. I don't know what others' goals are. Some, I believe, are making money. And that this is the ultimate goal of the operation. I believe, brother, the money they're making ain't worth no money at all. That's right. That little money they make making. Oprah Winfrey, she's the richest black woman in America. But when the Jewish people told us Steve Copley must be canceled from that show, I was canceled. So don't tell Brother Copley when you get enough money, you're going to come out here and fight the beast because there's not enough money on the table that can make her change her mind. So I doubt that when you get the money, you'll change yours. Check. Check. All right, check. As you know me, I understand. Check means I understand. I think we lost some little volume here. Uh, the gold tapes. There's some gold tapes in there. I, I'm thinking y'all got, got me covered. There's a gold tape in there. That box or the other box. Little four little Maxell gold tapes that in the box. Brand new, unopened. Just toss one at the brother. Nah, some of y'all, and we lost a little volume here, I think. I don't want to put my mouth on too much of this stuff. Uh, y'all see the gold tape in there? It's four Maxell. All right. Um, uh, now, when Brother Copley passed the hat for Brother Copley, because Brother Copley don't mind standing up and asking people to support the program, you can just put it in, but uh, then you people who are taping the program need to at least make a $5 contribution to cover your tape. I think I lost a little volume here. I don't know what happened. You stand on the court, but there we go. It's in there now. All right. There we go. Thank you, Brother Noble. Oh yeah, there we go. Show sure you right. All right, now I gotta go back and repeat all this shit over again. <laughs> well, one thing I always do like to start with uh, is uh, I need to know if I'm needed. And how I know I'm needed is if I ask you certain things and you don't know those things, then I know you need what I have to offer. Um, usually I try to ask a couple of things I think are readily accessible to Africans. Uh, how many of y'all in your love that one? So you're right, that's about everybody. Let the record reflect that that's about everybody. Uh, the lovers of Africa, we know them by how they protect Africa back. Check. Yeah. Uh, now, the U.S. government uh, does a lot of devilment uh, against Africa, and much of that devilment is instigated by the State Department. The State Department controls the various embassies in the various African countries, and the CIA works out of those embassies under diplomatic cover. Check? Yeah. 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 Right. All right, so any African will surely know who the Under Secretary of State for African Affairs is. Go on. False. And. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, let me ask y'all again. How many people here love Africa? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you talk to an African lady. They'll tell you.
tell you. I say it all the time. <laughs> African will tell you that the IMF and the World Bank, not the U.S. military, only in certain instances, the IMF and the World Bank are forcing the African countries into lowering wages and raising prices, which puts you at odds with your people. It's causing the destabilization of the countries. Let me just tone just a little bit down. Destabilization of the African countries. And so they'll tell you, will you Africans in America put pressure on those people who are punishing us through loan or debt arrangements? Check? Check. Yeah. Check. Check. Check is fading on down. Uh, so the IMF and the World Bank will be two spots where Africans would pinpoint as imposing ugliness on Africa, who runs the World Bank? White man. It's a white man. Check. Michael Covid. What is it? Pardon me? Michael Covid. Same guy? Close. What's his name? Steps from the Rothschild family. Lawson was the head of the World Bank. The name you are calling on is Michael Camdesis, who is the head of the International Monetary Fund, which is one of the questions. You still got the World Bank left out there. Yeah. Illuminati. Someone said Rothschild. Greenspan. Greenspan. That's Federal Reserve. All right. Now, imagine I'm the hunky. I'm sitting up at the first Penn Foundation or some shit. Or sitting down in City Hall or I'm sitting up in the top of one of them uh, pyramids down there. And they say, boy, they really didn't big on the African thing out there. And they say, fuck it, man. They don't even know who the real African killers are. Check. Yeah. Now, the reason I ask you that is, is to establish whether I'm supposed to be here or not. Because my problem is, is that I can't catch the Africans having their behavior meet their value system. Check. 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 Which means that if your behavior matches your values, I mean, I see you. I see the African in you. But I challenge the African in you to go to the point for Africa and be what you say. Now, if I start bringing up the preachers, everybody would dog them out for not fighting the devil. And they don't. They don't ever advertise devil caught live on Sunday at 11. And you can come there and see the devil all caged up because they kicked the devil's ass during the week and they're going to show you the ass they kicked on Sunday, which is what the Sunday was about, when you rest from kicking ass all the rest of the week. But you know they don't do that, right? Because they're not really in pursuit of anything. Check. But neither are you. You will tell Brother Coley, Brother Coley, I'm with you, brother. And, and you feel like you are. But for what the brother's focus is, you're not yet going to fill the void to get the ones who got to be gotten, the ones who must be threatened, the families who must be checked, remain unopposed in Philadelphia too. Check. 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 And this is part of why they didn't want me back. Because they know they have worked you in the position that you think you know. And that's what makes you dangerous is that you will walk out and perpetrate against another from a zero position. And your zero will perpetrate on their zero, and somebody will be arguing over who the black is. And the monkey will get away. So brother, don't come in the spirit of forcing up some unity, because we're already unified by our stupidity. <laughs> now, I, I come at you like this because I want you to be what you say. That's all. If you say, I ain't shit, then fine, I can live with that. I ain't shit either, you can live with mine. We can better adjust when we know where we stand. Marcus Garvey once said that the threat to the black community is the college educated. <laughs> and as I go to these various colleges, from Morgan to Hampton to Howard, the University of Minnesota, University of Illinois, University of Cincinnati, UCLA, University of Kansas, I'll walk you around to all of them. They didn't know the answers either. Now, someone tell me, brother, we really need to cut out this conspiracy shit and go out here and get a job. <laughs> brother, you need to...
to quit talking and go do something. And the suggestion is, is that the people have had the answers all along and have really tried the revolution, and the revolution hasn't worked out. But the revolution ain't never been tried because the enemy ain't never been the target. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I will suggest this to you. The next time you go to follow somebody and y'all walk, you say, hold on, just a minute, brother or sister. Let me ask, ask you a question. Who is the enemy anyway? And if they don't give you a valid answer, you better step back. Because how will they fulfill their obligation that they pledge to the black people if they don't know who the pledge must be transacted against? I mean, certain things get real logical when we need to draw some conclusions about all of this. And part of the reason somewhere the equation has come down where the wrong people have been perpetrated and the right people get castigated. And the people say, okay, that's all right. I can live with that. I, I put pressure on the people who sell the brother's material. That brother go out on the blue lake. Part of one of my reasons I came here was to clean up all of that because Philadelphia is offline. Meaning offline is that we missed four or five sessions on the enemy since the last time I was here. We ain't gonna be able to do them all tonight. We don't be able to jam it all into one evening. But the point of it is, is that somebody around here know enough to keep it out. Last time I came, I couldn't get in on black radio. I was denied. They said, we won't have them. They put Jack Felder on. And then beat Jack Felder up over me as if he can answer to me, to them. And that was a bad move. So something about you here, and they don't want something. But you've been moving in spite of that because I have talked with you. And I'll say this to those people who have sold those tapes without my permission, on the other hand, some of you have come because of them. Because you have found access to something through other people, it has brought you forward for more. So in the long run, if it has any value, you'll show up anyway, in spite of how you were found. So we're going to get straight with all of that. We're going to clean all of that up, and we're going to move forward because we're not going to win this thing dishonorably. I ain't gonna get with brother and say how I cheated on my woman cause tonight my sister and baby ain't here with me and tonight I'm gonna go run off in the hotel with a sister and brother gonna stand point while I do the coochie and then at the end I'm gonna say brother trust me we gonna beat the honky. <laughs> it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work brothers. It's not gonna work. If you cheat on the one you love then you will always fuck the people. but a moral context of which religion could be a part of its voicement, but a mere circumstance of one's keeping the word that one pledged to give. Now what I come to understand that I didn't know before is that the oath takers, the oath takers, are far better organized and have a force that's backed up with fear. I underestimated the oath takers. Anybody up here in the Greek fraternity of the world? Anybody? <coughs> Anybody up here? Trying to massage, you won't raise their hand. Anybody up here in a Greek fraternity of sport? <laughs> Come on now, I got pictures of some of y'all. <laughs> Come on now, get up. Come on, where we at? Somebody, come on up here real quick to Brother Copley so we can show the people something. <laughs> Is anybody, anybody, anybody up here in a fraternity of sport? There you go. Oh, wow. don't, now, don't, don't bring up nobody else now. <laughs> no, stand up. Come on up here, brother. Come on up here real quick. I ain't gonna bite you, and I won't break on him with the brother, because brother to brother is stronger than any other thing. So we be true on that. How you doing, that? Show you right. What you in? Cap out the side. Cap out the side. Okay. You know what I'm gonna ask you to do? Cap out there. What I'm gonna ask you to do? You want to show me? Can you show the shit to the Go ahead. <laughs> yes. And then I'm supposed to do something. And then you would do. That's it. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. All right. 
in the streets, not doing it in every city for a particular reason. We just left Detroit. In fact, I got only maybe two, three sets of three lectures I just gave in Detroit. It's kind of like the whole weekend. I didn't sell it to anybody because I was going to explain it in the lecture. It just allows someone, when I have two, three lectures, Detroit was offline too, so I paid $1,300 to go up into Detroit. And the G7 was meeting up there too last weekend. Because I had to be up in there to see what the G7, why the G7 came to Detroit and hold a meeting on jobs, and they just laid out 200,000 people up there, out them auto, auto things, right? And that's an interesting thing, they said jobs can uh, mess up the national security. Uh, uh, lack of jobs or lack of people thinking they should get a job will destabilize the population. That's really what they talked about, not about giving jobs. They'll pass out applications. Anyway, uh, and I, I do this demonstration to check the oath takers. Because when we uh, do a little bit about the Grecian Sphinx, uh, and, I, and I'm gonna put certain things here on video that I wanna get on this video so that you will support the brother and to share what brother Noah had. All right. I promised brother Noah that I would suggest to you to make sure you get into this because some of these things I'm gonna put on the screen. And they're visual things that will allow you to show certain things. I was just telling them, Brother Noah, about getting the video subsequent to this because of what it would try to do. Uh, uh, but uh, we are calling on the oath takers because uh, we believe that there should be no oath that they take that should separate us from them. That's right. And sometimes when I ask to them to show to the audience the handshake, some resist and they suggest that they fear based upon the pledge that they took never to reveal it, of being hurt or castigated by another member who would see them do that. Uh, in Dallas, I uh, asked a brother to come up and he, he didn't want to show it, he sat down. And then another brother just jumped out the audience, he said, I'm an alpha, I'll show mine. And he came up and showed it. People stood up and gave him a 10 minute standing ovation. I mean, it was an awesome thing, it was really chilling. So at the end of that, uh, we went to the mission we selling tapes and doing other things. The brother come up and said, brother, when the intermission is over, will you give me one more chance to come up front? It's okay, brother, no problem, no problem. So I went on about my business. I'm selling the tapes. And brother comes up, reminds me again, will you give me this opportunity? I said, sure, brother, okay, fine, fine, fine. And when I started up after the intermission, I just went on really right past him. And he, <coughs> he was sitting down with me, he come on up in the front. And he gave the demonstration. And, and he showed the handshake. And I asked him why, and I just went back to Texas, Brother Charles, he was at the lecture at Fort Worth. Uh, and uh, I asked him why, and he said, well, uh, they made it, the people made it safe for this brother to cross over, and since the people did what they needed to do to protect him, I now know I can come over. So we have to be in the, in the understanding of, of the oath takers. Now, if the, the Greeks take the oath, the four male, the four female take the oath, and the boule take the oath. Uh, in fact, I was saying, is that a VCR up there, Brother Noah? Is that a VCR? That, that TV on that, would that show something? I got something I can show the audience. You might want on a video of, a, of a, some boule activity uh, on video. You might want to see this. Uh, real subtle type of thing. And I think after I go an hour, I'm on a break for about 15 minutes so I can get this set up for you and then go the, the, the two we got to go. It'll, it'll be a minute before I get to it, but just take the time. It won't, won't be a rush. I ain't pressing it. Uh, and so uh, we also know that the attorneys take an oath. Any, is there any lawyers in here tonight? Any lawyers in here? They, they are, the lawyers already know the information, so they're not here tonight. Uh, <laughs> They take an oath. They take an oath never to oppose the Constitution. Mm. They, they'll never overthrow the law of which they agree to uphold. They become officers of the court. So they take a pledge. They take an oath never to. When you're in the army, you take an oath, Chet. In fact, I even found that there's a tenet in the army thing that suggests that you even hear someone suggest the overthrow of the U.S. government, you're supposed to report a man. Chet? All right, that's an oath. That's an oath. The little medical people take an oath, right? It's like them versus the vitamin people. <laughs> Jack, I will never support anything of which we cannot sell for 100 times these far. <laughs> Jack? Yeah. Right? They, and they don't break out that shit either. They said they don't have a heart attack, cost you 30000 
strength, that's without any surgery. That's just a, you need an emergency when we call seven dollars. I mean, this is unbelievable as shit, right? But they got it going on. Okay, so we got all these oath takers out here, and the oath takers are a threat to the black revolution. And so we put pressure on the oath taker. And what we've been doing since I've seen you last, we've been going through these various campuses and telling the Greek thing that we really like to suggest some change. Because the Greek thing, like many of the other false idol worships, sow the seeds of inferiority in the children. What's wrong with the boule thing? What's wrong with the boule thing is that it gives honor to the Greek thing. It's a little revive in here. I'm trying to cut that back out of here. Just one more notch down. Too close to the speakers. Where the speaker at? Well, over there. False and. <laughs> um, and so, uh, we all right? We're not tape. Because when you need to change, let me know. Cause, all right. Uh, so, uh, so uh, we're, we're putting pressure on the old takers. Because, and I want you to write that down, because uh, the police take them over. And the main thing is the fraternal order of police. They all locked in on something. So we're, you know, we need to get into the Masonic Oath, the Rome Scholar Oath, the Skull and Bones Oath, the Boule Oath. We found out that the Boule are not allowed to talk to non-members. So you can't get them to answer something you suggest because they're not allowed. And brothers told me about catching good, uh, good on the radio over the Boule, and that's an honor. A uh, sister Karen of the Black United Front just caught Dennis Archer, mayor of Detroit, busted his ass in front of her. 400 people at a community forum, and he's stuttered and stammered and cold and hard. Uh, we've got up on Governor Wilder on the black radio station in Chicago. He act like me and them was real good buddies, you know? And he would have been an elective and he was busy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and we got him there, you know? We had some brothers jam up Charles Hamilton, who co-wrote Black Power with Kwame Ture. He was on Bob Law show one night, and the little brothers in New York jammed him back on the boule, to the point Bob Law got pissed why y'all keep messing up my show with this boule dialogue. He said that, wait, I ain't never heard of this thing. It's irrelevant. And then the Tim brother said, well, brother, it is relevant because this is about serving the king. And so we questioned his ability to write black power, understanding he's with the king. And so he said, I'll have to he said, Steve Copley is the one taught us about this at the Slave Theater. He said, well, I'll get him on here. I don't want no more body calling in here for this boule shit. <laughs> but he ain't had me on either <laughs> over the boule question. In fact, I couldn't be on WLIB in New York. Block! The black state, the number one black station in the country, they tell me. <laughs> Not black enough for Brother Copley. <laughs> Pity, little brother. Two pairs of shoes, two, three pairs of pants, no car. No house, David no David obvious David weapons. David Diggins. David Diggins and uh, uh, Percy Sutton. Percy Sutton. In fact, brother. Percy Sutton, no. In fact, I what check this out here, brother. Watch this here. Oh. You, you, you called it up. Yeah. David Diggins called yeah. Percy Sutton and said, yeah. we want that Copley canceled on L.I.B. with yeah. Gary Bird. He ain't the only one who canceled. A Percy Sutton called the station and they bust me out. I was off. When I went to the slave theater, Brother Vernon Maddox dresses it from the podium. Why was Steve Cobley taken off the so-called black station? This is a phenomenon I ain't figured out because it ain't like the people got the goods. Unless these people, these black press people, maybe these radio people, maybe they know enough about it never to utter it, maybe they took the oath too. See, I'm looking at the impact of the denial of the knowledge and the castigation of the scholars. Now, other people are on C-SPAN. They on CNN. They on every show. They on the news. They on everything. And if you listen carefully, you'll know why. Because they don't accuse anybody of anything. It's no thicker or no deeper than the white man did. <laughs> We're suffering from generalities. The white man did it is not enough. It's not enough for Francis Wells Wilson to describe white supremacy. We must name white supremacy. Right. Yes. Or we must rule it foreplay and call for sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have you say check. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't doing it for applause. Yeah. Now, 
When brother says these things, I stand up to these people that I say them to. I've addressed them long before I brought it to you. Their answers make me tell you. Once I see that they understand that there is a line you're not to cross to make money in the black community and to be allowed to move around without being attacked. Some people fear the attack. In fact, some people pledge they believe, but they fear the enemy greater than they do not upholding the tenets of the belief. You see, I'm afraid of not telling. I'm afraid of not sharing. I'm afraid of you calling me and me not answering. I ain't been to Philly because someone offered and said I ain't even got no money. I don't come for that. Check. Check. No one asked. Now, I understand the difference. But, I get a funny feeling that unless we come to some conclusion about who is in control, we're going to get distracted into the concentration camp. Mm -hmm. Now, you may say maybe not. And I guess, let me get some of my equipment over here. And you can, I don't mean to trivialize like that, brother. If I could kind of have, uh, if you see any information, just flip the boxes and see if you see any information. I think, actually, some of it may be here. But I also think there's one more box. There's one long box that got nothing but knowledge in it. Short long box. Uh, what's the uh, what's one? No, this one still might be in the car even. Should have been, oh, here, is this it? Right here, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. And I'm not, I'm not saying that to put nobody down, we just uh, up the ante a little bit here. We, we, gotta, we gotta get the order straight now. We're, we're a community that's under attack, that's out of order. And because it's out of order, because we out of order, we're, uh, uh, we may give the enemy the wrong signal. We must not give the enemy the wrong signal at a critical moment because he may attack because he thinks this is his moment. Now, you got another group of people, many of which have never seen the enemy. I'll show you a little dialogue between myself and, uh, share with you a little dialogue between myself and Jesse Jackson on the radio over who is the enemy. What is the enemy? You will be intrigued by the answer, but what you will see about the answer is that he cannot name it. I know it's like, laying somebody up a ball and all they got to do is spike it over the net and when they go and they, they catch it and throw it back the other way. <laughs> so there ain't no action at the net. And I, and I believe that there are more people in on this than we've ever come to imagine. I, I believe this is deeper than we thought. Uh, I've spent a lot of my last couple of months uh, reading the Negro stuff. I never into the Negro books and stuff. Negro history and stuff. But now that we come to understand the Boulay's role in protecting the round table group, I now have to go back and see just how this thing got put in place. I did a series of tapes called White Finance Negro Leadership versus Marcus Garvey and Black Jewish Relations 93, where I watched the development of this thing and have stand up to say that the Boulay uh, first assignment was the strangulation of Marcus Garvey, the creation of a false scenario called Harlem Renaissance and the diversion of black scientists and others to get into poetry, dance, and literature to offset an emerging black military. Uh, very, very intense research. I'll tell you some books you might check in on right now. Uh, also, there's a tape up there called What's Your Mother's Maiden Name? Boulay. It's a recent code we just deciphered. I'm going to show you that right here. Uh, but the tape is about some recent Negro history stuff I found. I think one person bought, bought the tape. Uh, if you're a researcher, you will find how valuable it is at piecing all these things together. I found some information with Carter G. Woodson talking about how all of the blacks have sold out to the various white foundations that were buying up Negroes at that time. And he says one of the things they asked him was, will you fuck Marcus Garvey when I give you this money? And he said how secretly he never wanted to say he was with Garvey, but how personally he would never be a part of fighting against them, and he talks about meetings with A. Philip Randolph and Du Bois and others where they vehemently said how they was going to jam up Garvey. And, and he says how much he heard it. He said, when Garvey died, I cried, and then in, this, in my eulogy to Garvey, I finally tell how much I loved him. And then I write in the Negro world. Uh, he starts writing in the Negro world, sharing his work with them. Eventually, he wrote The Miseducation of the Negro because he then came to understand that he had been used, that the college-trained phenomenon was a hoax. Now, he was a founder of the Boule in Washington, D.C., so he came a long way to come to that conclusion. What we now have within our reach is the ability to make up our mind and not take 40 years to do it. 
because we got the information that he had that quickly showed him what the real deal was. Du Bois eventually changed his mind after years of being the same. Uh, the book uh, by uh, Gogin, G-O-G-G-I-N-S, on Carnegie Woods, and I know you can get it at everyone's place bookstore in Baltimore. I know Brother Nati got this book. It's a book about Carnegie Woods. Talks about the Rockefeller Foundation, the Rosenwalds, and others, and how he keeps trying to do this thing. He tries to help them help his history association, but they keep saying, look, you gotta link my laws to get this money. And he keeps writing his personal letters about how much he was he hates the others who have taken the money that make the hockey think he gotta take the money too. To go along, because there was no black financing of black things. That was awesome, awesome dialogue. There's also a new book out about W. E. B. Du Bois by David Levering Lewis. Thick book, 700 pages, a very, very important book. Very, very important because nowhere in the 700 pages does he mention the boule in the whole book. But, 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 check this out. When he does the interview on the book in the Washington Post, and I gotta tell you the dates, right? But you, this article is awesome. He talks about that he heard Du Bois personally in 1948 speak uh, at Central State University, where the Boule was hosting a meeting because his father was in the Boule, David Levering Lewis. And that his father was head of the School of Divinity at Central State, and that he, as a Boule child, was at the convention and heard W.E.B. Du Bois in 48 say, this talented temp shit don't work. We was a fraud. I, I helped mislead my own people. The hunky betrayers. I'll show you some stuff in that white finance Negro leadership table on Garvey, where the Jewish community set it up and plotted why it would go into the black community and be a donor to get a right to assimilate with the other whites. And for that, they would fight uh, anti-Semitism by remote control. Say, because we get the money, we can fight it like click, click. Awesome confessions. So the work. The, uh, in fact, the key story was this Memphis Commercial Appeal story that came out back in a year ago, about in March, right now, a year ago. And I asked brothers, had the story come out much here? And he said, no. You, you familiar with the story that had come out that the Army had been found on Martin King's granddaddy since 1917? You remember the story, maybe March 23rd, 1993? You heard about this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to have to spend a day on it because it, it helped me understand something. What the story identified was a Philadelphia family. Key. A guy named Emmett Scott. Yeah. Emmett Scott, who had a son who was a physician here in Philadelphia, who was the father of Elaine Brown of the Black Panthers. She mentions it in her book on page 50. She mentions, that's it, Brother Charles got it right there. On page 50 of that book, she mentions that Emmett Scott, the first black man to serve in the cabinet in 1917, he was special assistant to the Secretary of War, Newton Baker. Emmett Scott had come from Tuskegee, where he was the assistant to R.R. R. Moulton, who was on ship when the Tuskegee experiment went down. All this shit hooks up now. Oh, I walk you. I don't have time to go all this route with you, but I, this is where I am lately. I, 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 I have a need sometimes to talk out to the people where I'm studying because many times it's not at the spot I'm lecturing. The lessons you miss, I really shouldn't be into this, but I'm kind of excited about it, so I gotta tell you where I am because when I suggest these things to you and you pick up the themes, you bring information that adds on to where I'm looking and the picture gets clear. And that's an honorable thing. I say in the tape, I, 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 I need an need a overhead projector. So when I'm in Los Angeles, I go to little students, bring an overhead projector and present it to me as a gift at a lecture. Well, I couldn't carry it with me on the airplane, so I donated it to the place I lecture in LA, the Good Life Health Food Store. So now that's available for everybody. Someone in Philadelphia, here's a tape, but it says he needs an overhead projector. So tonight, a brother bought me a brand new overhead projector, which he's going to give to me tonight. And I'm honored by that. So I don't... I don't underestimate what it means to say it into the tape to the people because the people respond. When the focus comes down, the people do what has to be done. And if everybody does what they can do, we got it covered. If you catch the ones in your thing, in your sphere, everybody catch theirs, we got it covered. You know, the CIA has a thing. It's another set of tapes you missed. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Future Goals of the Spy System, the Early Warning Officer, Spy System 2000, the Targeting of the Poor. I had that over there tonight. And the other one I didn't bring.
bring us housing intelligence community, monitors, networks, and groups. Pardon me? I was looking for that and I didn't find it. Right, but I only could bring some of them. I've been selling out with every stop, so I don't get as much time between lectures to make the tape. So that's something else we got to wide now uh, on is uh, making tapes. Uh, it's an honor to be in this position. Uh, things are moving. It appears as if circumstances are forcing the people uh, to a clear picture. And uh, uh, it's an honor to be in the vanguard of about pushing towards the core negativity because my greatest uh, dream uh, that I see just as clearly is the day we hold that beast head up and we pull out the big sword and make that cut and everybody steps up and takes a little slice. You come up and get your slice. You know, I see that day. I see people as far as I can see. And this is the day the beasts go down. And I, and I just a little sidebar. The, the keepers of the beast are Rockefeller of North America because we're going to name them. Rothschild for the Europeans <laughs> and Oppenheimer for the Africans and the Australians. Those three families perform the triangle around the core of negativity of which I don't have no name for. I cannot tell you what that is. But we string two or three of them up, they'll tell. <laughs> the police have shown you that we're threatened with incarceration or pain, you will tell anybody. Check. Check. You're supposed to say no check. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Hey, watch it now. Okay. I want no Jim Jones shit here. <laughs> Y'all be with me, you got to think your way through. Question my shit. Check me out. Go check the books. Is Brother Unfair when he says this about this one or that one? Is he wrong about this? Is the information really there? Check me out, don't. Hey, we all, we have all uh, fested the error. That's why we all here. So all of us can be checked. That's part of the game. And I take the weight, I'll bear the burden. Be no greater burden to bear. Uh, so uh, uh, we be in line with that. So get that book on W.B. Du Bois, uh, David Levering Lewis, because in it he tells about the day that Spingar comes and offers him to be a captain in military intelligence. And what the story said in the Memphis Commercial Appeal was that Spingar had been a military spy every day he was chairman of the NAACP. He even turned over all the memberships of the group and that Du Bois was his man. And that together they went out and formed a spy network that identified potential troublemakers and also suggested potential informants. And the Boule served as the network in every city to set up a spy organization. That's what we were able to put together with the Memphis Commercial Appeal story. So how I got banned on the radio in D.C. was that Kathy Hughes has the story reprinted 25,000 times in the uh, newspaper there, the, uh, the News Dimension. It was a great thing. They sold 25, 30,000 copies at 25 cents. Really helped the brother's paper. It was an outstanding achievement. But the story was about everything already passed. And I know enough about the intelligence community to know that when it wants to tell something, it always tells you about things already passed. Coin Intel Pro, not now Intel Pro. Uh, they will tell you who they radiated in the 40s, but it's a secret. You got to catch the 94 radiation. You got to catch them. It'll be 124 for they'll tell on the 94 beacon. Check. So when somebody starts telling me about 1917 and 1968, that's where it ended. I understand that that's part of the diversion to stop me from 98 and 88. Check. Check. And then those three spy tapes, which which really needs to be a lecture in itself. I talk about where we notice that the CIA has this little model that they use to measure a true threat. And it's called intention plus capability equal threat. It's a formula. They, you, they got all kind of A's and Pythagorean shit, all stolen shit all up under there. Because this is a computer model that they use to measure information. For example, they say, uh, black man, Miller, Philadelphia, wants to free Mandela. Check of his, uh, that's intention. Uh, threat. Uh, appears to lack resources to get a plane ticket. <laughs> equals uh, a capable, capability. Threat equals zero. <laughs> okay? So they listen to the dialogue and they measure the capability of imposing the dialogue and that equals your threat potential. Check? Check. And they have all kinds of sophisticated ways of breaking this down. Measuring the informant and this and that. An intention is measured by indicators. Coley announces in Philadelphia that he's having a conference in Baltimore, and I am, and I'm inviting all of you to it, 
July 8th to July 15th. It's going to be at the Hyatt Regency Harbor, wherever the Hyatt Harbor is, right there in Baltimore. In a harbor. In a harbor. Hyatt Regency. July 8th to July 15th. Write it down now. And the sheriff. And the sheriff. Get it all that together. And the convention, it appears as if that the rooms we rented also just happen to have been rented by the boule. <laughs> and it looks like, for some strange reason, it must be a hotel mix-up. But it looks like we're going to have our conference in the same room. And in fact, in the 90 years since its inception, right here in Philadelphia, it appears as if that for the first time in the history of our race here in America, the bottom 10 is going to confront the top 10. That's what's getting ready, the 10 versus the 10. It's about to show now in Baltimore, July 8th. How many of y'all are interested in coming? Now, part of the reason why we have to be strong about Philly, I'm coming back next month, I'm coming back month after next, is because it's going to be harder for California to get here, but they're coming. In uh, Milwaukee, they already rented three buses, a county commissioner who's a non boule politician. See, when I looked up, the, not the only Boulé mayor that became mayor, two men that weren't Boulé were Harold Washington, who was murdered after his second victory in office. He was a non boule mayor. He had 99.9% of the black vote. So, unconscionable achievement in a town where the hunkies had paid on 50% of the brothers. Because they owned brothers up in there on that politics thing. That was their way to the streets and sanitation, to the Bureau of Electricity, to the Department of streets and sand, uh, water and other things, their jobs came from the politics. So they were owned by the politics. Harold Washington and Marion Barry. And doesn't it, isn't it intriguing that you remember what Wilson Blitz said when he wrote his autobiography? He said, if I had not defended those men that shot down those black people in the move, I was clearly understood that they would kill me. You didn't, did you see that in his autobiography? That's in the book he wrote after he left office. But he's just a joke. But I'm, I'm, and it's something similar to him and Bradley, who had never talked to his own police chief for a year and a half. Let the hunky run out on his own. See, a hunky wouldn't be working in my city like that. He'd be serving my shit. He'd be serving you. He'd never be running around with his own military in my town. And when Bradley left office, he didn't have nobody he was even grooming. He'd been married 20 some years, and a hunky come in and replace him. He had no brother he brought around in his last two, three years, started grooming him and setting him out front, sending him to the community and lining him up. Nothing! Because he never read it for brothers. So he didn't believe brothers were supposed to keep it. He was him to give it back to the auntie. But uh, while a uh, good, uh, what Dickens, he is a boule. Half Hispanic, half white, half black, and half of both short. <laughs> Check. So when I go to be on L.I.B. Deacons call something that says Coley will stir up racial hatred in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So L.I.B., they get burned by the hunkies anyway, supposedly for spewing anti-Semitism, and every time I go up there, a 20-minute disclaimer, we're, we're not anti-Semitic. Oh, please, we're not anti-Semitic. <laughs> we're in no way appear to be anti-Semitic. We really are the one. And all this disclaiming shit, bagging up and bowing to the hunky. Something's going on here. I'm a little worried about the ones who were supposed to have given the knowledge, which would have made my job unnecessary. It's unfortunate I must do this. I really want to do something else. But unless the people are armed with the appropriate poison on the right spears, we ain't going to get the wizard. We're going to end up off in the OEO boy somewhere. And don't go pull the curtain on the wizard, which is where we head. Because we have a theory that when we pull the curtain on the wizard, he'll pop. But we got to get past the OEO boys. <laughs> and that's the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the county sheriffs in this area, the Philadelphia police, the National Guard. That's, that's the military, the OEO boys. They, they protect the wizard. And you remember, there was the Wicked Witch of the West. That's America. Women just happen to be right here up in us, shit, and she greets you in New York like this. <laughs> Wicked Witch of the West, the most powerful of all the whites. She won the war amongst the whites, so I believe it's an honor to be right here in the core of the beast. I believe it's an honor to be here, because this is where the baddest hunky ever was, is no better hunky to be.
And be the hunky is the goal, nothing less. I'm not here to inform you on shit white people doing or to jack you up and incite you about the boule. The goal is to defeat the wizard. And for that, we must know the combination of getting through the odds. And if you remember, almost like a parable, like whoever wrote this shit knew, also in the land of Oz was some little black shit with wings. <laughs> that's the boule. And that's just the way they logo look. It's the damn Grecian Sphinx. And it got wings on it. And it looks like whoever wrote this shit knew just who protected the wizard. <laughs> but we know the story. And the story is, is that many people have the information, they say but they lack the courage to push it in the arena and make the difference. Right. Check. Check. Other people need a heart. Some sort of way of gutting up on the information, that's that thing we need with each other. See, if we lock down in each other's hearts, no one will tell who's with us. When I'm going to some of these cities, some of the strangest people come to me and say, brother, brother, I just want you out. Now I look at them, I say, damn, I, you cannot look at a person and tell who the person is. That's because we locked up in here. Hey. Who else was on that journey? Boy, he won. Brain. A brain. Uh. And then to wrap the shit up, she wanted to take it home, right? You take the shit home when you get all of this shit. But just remember what happened when you get to the curtain. It's getting to the curtain. Now Jesse Jackson got the people confused about the role of the youth. He suggests after 500 years of exploitation of this country, our number one problem is gangster rap. <laughs> the sound is what? All right. Messing them tape players up over there. <laughs>
And I say, yeah, that's interesting because the guy who wrote the Boulay history book, Charles Wesley, Wesley he wrote the Alpha history book. He said, I know. Now that let me know that he did know about the Boulay. He just could not say. But then he turns to me and he says, if you, he says, I want to tell you this. He said, I never revealed the handshake to my wife or to any of my 17 kids. That's right. And I ain't going to reveal it to you. And you need to understand why. If you can understand what prohibits me from doing it, and you understand the power of the oath, you will unlock a key that will release thousands to the cause. He said, but as of now, I ain't telling. And that was a challenge to me to make me go back and look at that thing again. I must have missed something. That's when I started asking at the lecture. Let me see this here. And then I saw the denial and the resistance. They would say, brother, you are in the forefront of helping black people, but I can't do this. And in some cases, I had one in Chicago where a brother who was very ambitious in the black community, he just happened to be a cow too. And he said, look, I fear Coley more than I fear the fraternity. He did the handshake. And then the Capitol brother literally jumped him in the back of the room over doing it. And the people took care of the brother. But, but, we, but we're going to go through this while cleaning this up. Now, I needed this tape. I want to play a tape for you. Uh, I need uh, a box uh, there. I got two little boxes in the box uh, with little sound bites in them. Uh, what time we got here? All right, which nation is this? This the African nation? Then prove the African way. Now I want to play a little something for you. Uh, I haven't seen you, uh, I haven't seen you since the rebellion.
They want the egg on the move. And so don't get caught as an enemy to the move, thinking you really own it. That could be the greatest danger. You will confuse the punishment. So in the middle of the rebellion, which was a circumstance, this brother here has to raffle. We're raffling off that boule video with myself and Oscar Marquez who comes in for the last 20 minutes to codify the symbols. And I really appreciate Brother Rose made a sign and everything. I'm really honored uh, by you, brother. And I, I appreciate this stuff. Now, this brother and other research brothers really been on the case and on the point for following the enemy. And I'm really proud of this because in every city, the information cadres have arisen that, that are focused, and in spite of the distraction, their, their, their numbers are growing. And the information that you get a chill when you find shit. You know what I mean? In the library, I find some shit. Ah, shit, I got it. And I look up, and everybody's real quiet and shit. And then they read, they excite them. I'm all. You know, so yeah. you get that feeling yeah. when you're tracking the beast. What's this? These are clues to the mystery of the beast. Yeah. And, and it's exciting. And, 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 and when you feel this thing, it, it makes you go deeper. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm, 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 I'm forced to say this, uh, and, I'm, and, I, and I must be humbled by it. But I'll do this with you. You take what's on that table. I match what's on that table as far as penetrating the forces of the enemy against any other such description. Now, if that in a contest or a trial turns out to be the most penetrating moment, why was the ones with the least money able to do it? One simple factor. They wanted to. They wanted to. The reason we got pinned the tail on the hunky was because we wanted to. And I suggest those with money could have done it sooner and better, but they don't want to. They get paid the way you chose, That's right. Now, show you right. Now remember this. If you go to watch the Philadelphia Phillies play a baseball game, there's a guy sitting over at the third base coach line, right? He's standing there doing this. Every time a batter come up, he go. <laughs> you know what he's doing? He's giving a signal to the batter, right? Everybody in the stadium see him, right? But don't but 30 guys know what he's saying. So when you confront the secret societies, they will suggest to you that what they do is not secret. And you must come to understand it doesn't have to be if you don't know the code. They can do it right in front of you. If you don't know that the signal, if this is bunt, if this is take, if this is steal, but it's keyed by whatever I do after I touch my ear is what you do. So a guy does the hat, he does the steal, he does the take, he does them all, but then he does the ear and does the hat, and that's the deal. Check? Check. So a secret society doesn't have to hide the communications, they just have to protect the code. All right? We're now trying to penetrate the enemy, and we're at this layer of the enemy. What you will vouch for, if you watch my years on the tapes, you will vouch for the depth of the penetration. I know more about the boule now than I knew when I was here last. But if you had, if you had caught last year's lesson, you would have found out I knew more than a year before, and I know more now than I knew just a month ago. Because all we do when we're not doing this and moving the action into the arena, the force of better circumstance is coming up with better formulas and equations on the penetration of the enemy. And uh, we're proud of the work. Jesse Jackson, after the rebellion on a DC radio show, suggested that he just want to have a meeting of all the leaders. <laughs> session, we wanted to get people to basically coordinate. People were from Chicago, from St. Louis, from East St. Louis, from Kansas City, from Seattle, from LA, from New York, from Maryland, from Virginia, from South Carolina. All of them, their own way, were, were marching, testing, or making statements, and press conferences. It was some feeble attempt to coordinate our activities, and the group that did come, begin to lay out some plan of action that they are now taking back to the several communities. 
And now we do meetings, I am sure, and nobody is, 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 is denied the right to have a meeting. Now, the, 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 the finding or the recommendations from that meeting are available to... To everybody. And people can get them by calling. Well, you can call the rainbow at 728. 1180-728-1180. And, and basically what we, the first issue that was, hey, coordinate a calendar of known protests around the country. Mm. Did you hear that? Yeah. What did you say? What did he say, brother? Coordinate a calendar of all known protests around the United States. Right. right. Yeah, you might not know a spot thing when you hear it, but you need to hear it because sometimes it's disguised as other things. I mean, let you hear it again. 7281180. And, and basically, what we, the first issue there was to hey, coordinate a calendar of known protests around the country. Activities taking place, the opposed to having 50 little bit of things, we're trying to have bigger events, bigger protests. Second, well, what happened was once he coordinated the calendar, there was never no more protests. It just went away. Uh, be careful of this dangerous word called unity. I'm a little worried about this word. See, I can't unify with somebody unless we agree to who the enemy is, because it could get confusing. We don't want to be confused. The confusing part is if we don't agree who the enemy is, then how can we unify? Because at some point, his assistance of something you do may conflict with the goals of our unity. See, with unity, we say we pledge to be the enemy. But if you're in the unity in a coalition, and somebody on a Rockefeller Foundation grant you got a fuck Rockefeller, now you're in a problem. You got a contradiction. Check? So be leery of this word unity. There'll be no unity around immorality. Okay, Jackson won. Now let's uh, go to Jackson and see hopefully on who is the enemy. After uh, this guy, uh, there's a guy on tell Brother Jackson, I don't know about this protest and this march and this shit. I don't think it works. So he's going through a dive trap about telling the guy about how important marching is. And then I'm the next caller and I raise a question about who is the enemy. Who is the biggest problem? In other words. All right. So you're right. People march down the street or walk down the street, that's one kind of gap. That makes one kind of political statement. If 10,000 march, it's another kind of statement. That is how see numbers. That's how people marching in this. If today if 10,000 folks march down the street, march in lockstep, they cannot be ignored. Because there's power in groups and there's power in discipline activity. That night is cross talk, you're on the air. Yeah. Uh, what the caller was alluding to is that uh, too often when the people march, other people step in behind them and usurp that power that they have just been developed and use it and reach out it for other means and in some cases for personal and not drive. It becomes for us to raise the whole question of whether or not voting, registering to vote, and voting will deliver for our people what we need to gain from the ones who are in power. Now, we need a power down If we had any black meetings over what we were going to do as a race, I have alleged that the reason we keep coming up with the wrong equation is that we will not focus on who really has the power. Should we walk on George Bush or should we walk on Rockefeller? Should we jump up into the Council on Foreign Relations meeting and demand a change in the world view of the U.S. government or should we go change the State Department? Should we get the ones at the top? Or should we change the operators that they continuously send to us, the buffer between us and the ones that have the power? And in our community, the real problem develops for the force to come up, who are we after? If someone says we need the Ford Foundation, but someone else says we can't hang out with them because they will never deliver in the interest of our people, then we will have a conflict over who we will name as the enemy. And that remains the underlying problem in our inability to unify. Because in most cases, our people have lead the roles to the people that we must get. We must get Rockefeller. But someone will say, no, not him. 
That remains the underlying difficulty, the inability to name the names of those who we are really at. It seems to me that nobody if you want to march on Rockefeller, that is nothing to stop you from doing that. If you want to mobilize people and, and make that case, then you ought to do that. I mean, we are free to fight back. And, and I say if it's marching on Rockefeller or marching on Bush, the, the, the thing with the change is non-activity. It is passivity. It is it, 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 is, it is turning on each other. Okay. Well, and, 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 and so, no, no, I would agree that y'all fight back. Oh, I agree and, with that. And, 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 and that given groups, <laughs> one of the women in the market, okay, okay, no problem. You might have a service. Let's take this opportunity to have this consensus. Right. And while we are fighting, somewhere we must prioritize who is the biggest problem. In other words, it's all right if the Copley flank go chases Rockefeller, the trilateral, and the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Rose Scholar, and the Southern Bones people. Right. And let him go chase them. But if we never come to the prioritizing of the enemy, then people will misinterpret a camera and a newspaper and the attention focused on one set of people chasing the KKK, and the other people are left to make the others look like mili militants or radicals or coops or crazies or untouchables or unwanted. When they decide that they will chase the bottom of the problem and not the peripheral or the or the distraction fit from the problem. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think that in, in that essence, because you know this problem is still multi faster. One thing that concerns me so much as I run around the various hospitals, or uh, even when we were back in LA and looked at who was hurt and who was shot and who was standing where we're breathing. Get it? You get it? One that been killed by another brother, even just another stack. You think we weren't in the same conversation? Not a set the brother up to do the hunky and good, right? I'm concerned that none of us kill kill any of us anytime. I have no problem with that. That's a real source of pain for me. That, 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 that we know that there is, in fact, uh, four or five hundred of us were killed by whites who were in the country. No one is sure if the black man wants to kill us, and we see in the country that have four or five hundred But if it's black and black, we are attacking each other with our arms all the time. It's not all right. Oh, I'm going to move this out of the way when I go in. I'm going to move this out of the way when I go in. Getting well, on creating. Getting well, we ain't saying. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and create comfort zone for each other is to make each other feel a sense of of security in each other's presence. Mr. Jackson, I raised this double question about focusing on the primary uh, uh, core of our energy. We have to take a shot surely we see the heart and not the big talk. In your discussion with me, you went off into black on black man. Now I'm trying to get us to agree that somewhere we in the race, some will be in on it, some won't. That we will go away and we will prioritize who it is is the biggest problem. And I would suggest that those of us who have studied, not been excited, but who have studied, are going to focus on the primary arteries of the people who are after. Some of them are down the street from the White House at the IMF and the World Bank. Some are at the Brookings Institute and the Rand Corporation and the Council on Foreign Relations, and those of us will go there, but we demand that there be a central focus on who these people are. Therefore, we won't get... I, I think our, our mayors who are trying to convert of servicing, you know, a lot of people who have been elected to serve, they can turn around. Well, there's no more to hear about that because he don't say that. <laughs> he goes off on another dialogue about the mayors having the responsibility of delivering soldiers. <laughs> now, right, he's coming next. Now, I, I think you need to pick up on the fact that when given the opportunity to pin the tail on the hunky, you can get the impression that something, something we've never been able to get to the bottom of. Why these niggas ain't never come up with the right equation on the enemy and the appropriate strategy in lieu of it? The strategy has been bad because the equation is screwed. So when they stop the rub from bringing a clear equation, they call the equation the divisive element, and the confusion continues. Yeah. 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 Now, you must have a foot to, to call it the order. 
So, for example, I was having some trouble being clear with Leonard Jeffries. He seemed to have thought that I was too militant to be associated with whatever that meant. I don't know what it meant. I have this problem in some places. But he was down in Dallas recently, and he looked at the video from Dallas. He was sitting in a hotel, and we went through this little thing with Jesse Jackson. And he stood up and said, I think I have mistaken this Copeland here. I think I now better understand the computation of the evidence. You see, I suggest at another point, this is evidence at the trial. The trial is what will happen when we win. We will try people for complicity. Because we will not repeat the mistakes. See, I can't get no covenant with these hoes. I can't do it. Because I know enough about them to know that unless they renounce prostitution, they'll turn a trick on me. on you and I was your man, sister. And I said, sister, will you take me back? If you take me back without making me confess my sins and take my pledge never to do it again, you'd be a fool. So how many times they gonna do it before someone recognize that because they're not virgins, they can't never stop doing it? They will well, as long as you protect the dope. That's that, that is the secret dope. That's, that's right. right. You got more than one. That's right. One that holds the system in contact. That's you right. More than one. All right. You have your belief. All right. What you got is you had the last supper. That's you right. You got to know the Masonic is and the base of the, uh, uh, the whole Masonic, what was all based on. All right. What was all that? A base to battle. That's right. And it's just, uh, they do not only swim. You got to come back to the church and look so at right. the church because that is the biggest mechanism in world is the church, the Christian church, concept. We take it as religion, but it's not. Nobody serves and get nothing out of Christian church but a white man. It's a right. white man and a white system. Right. That's the man didn't love the church, went to the boule. He's the man that went in there. He went there in secret, but he do go to church sometimes. But that was his secret of himself, that he right. went to the white man. I will never be on Anyway, to you, All right. I would never challenge to change your system. That's, right. That's what white supremacy is all about. That's right. why we say we have must change the whole philosophy of the school. You must be taught about you. When you're, when he's taught about him and educated to him, he won't do that because he will represent him. When he represents him, he'll represent you. Now, if you talk to me long, I'm going to have to share my feelings. <laughs> You, Next time I'll come back, just me and you do the lesson. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. But tonight I'm going to do this. I can do this in this This is the call right after me. Yes, my man? Yes, sir. Okay, great. I got two questions. Um, one, I don't have a problem with uh, fighting and taking direct action, but don't you agree we should prioritize our focus to, to place it directly on the, on the people in the place where we can get some relief? And two, previous caller mentioned that uh, we should be fighting the council of our relations, but yet still when I look on the membership, it says that you want to, you want to. what's happening in the world, I, mean, I don't do that. But the council on foundations, whatever it does. Stop. Remember that phrase. Whatever it does. Remember that. Now, she didn't call him out as being in it. Now he's talking about it, but he don't really know what it do. Right? Okay. You got to listen to this carefully. It's loaded with all kinds of clues to the lead here to the Grecian Sphinx. We're going to go from here to the Grecian Sphinx. Hey, well, I'm on membership. It says that you are, or you're on board with Council of Foundations. Can you explain? No, at any time I can be a part of finding out what's happening in the world, but I don't do that. But the Council of Foundations, 
whatever it does, has nothing to do with why we are not making a priority on prenatal care with all these babies dying and head start and daycare. It has nothing to do with why we're not in a sustained drive to reduce tuition and increase teacher pay. And when I focus on that, I sense that to be the right thing to do. Okay, now you now there's more than this, but you come to understand something, right? <laughs> she lines it right up at the doorstep of the council, all he gotta do is blow it open. And he steps all the way back and says, that has nothing to do with what's wrong with you. The only problem is that it has everything to do with it. These are the gatekeepers at the people at the top, and to disassociate bad health care. Brother Bruce, oh, I think too this time. Y'all got to hold it down a little bit for the brother Steve, so I don't end up shouting over you, all right? Has y'all got some good shit over there? We're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the other one. That's the Negro. No, I'm going to go back to the other one. Oh, I'll show you right. Okay. okay. All right. I got co co lecturers tonight. That's the uh, But uh, what you can see is that. Um, he disassociates the negative with a source, but he never will compute the evaluation of the source because he doesn't know what it does. But he know it doesn't have anything to do with pain, which is a lie. It's an absolute lie. So he's a buck. He's, a, he's, he's, he's one of them little munchkins with wings. <laughs> that keep everybody off the wizard, because if you ever got up on him, you'd see he was a punk. That's the formula. If we could just pull the curtain, <laughs> we got it. It's getting to the curtain. All right. And when I focus on that, I sense that to be the right thing to do. That 12,000 students in power and 13,000 at large it cost less than 10000 a year to go to Howard. And I said because it's one of the highest cost of black colleges in the country, about less than 10000 a year, but 30000 a year to go to Lord. Well, I think that a massive drive to reduce tuition and increase scholarships will make a big statement to a large segment of our population. But while one populace may be trying to go up and on to college to be able to make a contribution, another populace needs something very different from that. Prenatal care, and hip stop, and daycare, and more funding for public education. You look at the gap between the amount of money paid to a teacher of Crespo in D.C., state in contrast to Montgomery County, and that's an issue. But some people find that is for the intent. Now they didn't cut the sister off. She's cut off. Now, now there are many priorities. And he says, while you may prioritize that, there are many priorities. And what I said is we demand to have a prime priority of priorities on the enemy. See, when you stop, when you just stop everybody for a minute and say, who are we after? You're going to be stunned what they tell you. You'll be stunned. And it's shame you ain't asked someone. It really is, because you could avoid a lot of the pain if you just asked someone. They weren't going nowhere. That's why they ain't went nowhere. They weren't going. They weren't headed for nothing. They never had a goal but get the money and contain the people of the country. That's it. And that's why all other shit didn't seem to be working because it wasn't about that. It was about control. Control your ass. And don't else matter. Anyway, watch this. Now the host, he know he wouldn't dare ask about the CFR on his own, but watch how he uses the other callers to allow himself to ask. gap between the amount of money paid for a teacher of Crespo in D.C. state in contrast to Montgomery County, that's an issue. But some people find that is what they intend to engage in the fight. So while you may prioritize that, uh, there are your priorities, and you got to respect people's choice of what they choose to fight about. What is, what is this capital fund, uh, and I know it's big, the two calls that made reference to that, what, what does that council do? for the listeners who may not be aware of what I'm talking about. I've never been to a meeting. I spoke to one of them and said,
Now, this is a mystery to me. I just had to ask you one question. Did I have to show up here tonight and speak? Because if I, if I, if I could have done this any other way, I would have done it. I don't know how you can, I've never really been to a meeting. What does that mean? Say, I, I'm a virgin, I only did it twice. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian, I only eat chicken. <laughs> huh? I only cheated on my sister one time. What do that mean? I've never really been to a meeting, but I spoke at one. Now remember, he earlier said, whatever it does. Now watch this. As he now, when the boy says, is it a conspiracy, he know enough about it to say, no, it don't do that. What does this capital fund um, relates to the two calls that made reference to that? What, what does that council do for the listeners who may not be aware of what I'm talking about? I've never been to a meeting. I've spoken to one of them, and since the people who've been involved in foreign affairs, who analyze foreign affairs, who analyze foreign policy, all analyze it and what, what happens with the, the information? Well, sometimes they make it public, sometimes they share information one with the other, but it's not means foreign policy determined by the State Department mm -hmm. of the given administration. It's not by a... You might have so it's an arm of the State Department? No, 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 not at all. Whatever it does. No, it's not. When the State Department makes foreign policy right. based upon the judgment of the given you president and that Congress, the rule of that president and that Congress. So does the council advise the State Department? Not my knowledge. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think that's Mr. Paul made reference to it. I'm wondering how many listeners have that kind of confused as to exactly what, what that, the council, uh, the function of the council is. You, you served on it as an honorary member or what? You know, I was asked to serve on it some time back. I've never really been to a meeting, but I kind of hear what it does. You know, people seem to have a sense of rule of balance. certain countries who discuss the implications of a given foreign policy matter. But it's more academic than activist. It, it does not make one policy decision, nor is it an advisory group to say the Okay. Um, one exodus that I made. D. That's the last time you let me call in on this show. They want me to run. See, don't be calling him for that shit again. I said, but well, I saw you got two, two, three links here while we was up on the table now. So I ain't like you to take a chance to ask what you knew was forbidden. Now, I'll raise a question with you. If we call them all in, they do the same dance. You just ain't never press them. You never press them. I think this is bigger than we ever thought. In fact, you can see it's not even logical. In fact, that leads me to a part where I know that uh, brothers have a radio show here in Philly, at least they did until Wednesday, where they mentioned Steve Copley's lecture on the show. And what did they say after that, brother? Well, what happened was... Come on, come on, come on, come on. You gotta do this because you, because I'm suggesting this to you. You will never see the enemy till the last days when we try to ask. All you will see in the meantime is the buff. If you beat the buff, you will get the enemy. But you gotta beat the buff. And so the buff will come out. When you make the penetration, the buff will show up. When you call the question, the, the buff will look unquestionably guilty. Basically, we had a station, you know, we had a show on AIDS Update on WPEB 88.1, maybe some of the brothers and sisters are familiar. You know, we was kicking the knowledge, you know, because we learned it from Brother Copley here. He was pretty much our mentor. Although he wasn't on site when he was doing it, we was just listening to his tapes, and we said, this is how to kick the honky's ass. And this is how to expose these house niggas that's running us. So basically, we was doing this every show. We kicking them hard. We got names. We was kicking names. We was kicking forecasts about how this white supremacy thing was going on and trapping us up in a genocidal cycle. Who was responsible for keeping black people on their ass? And we was busting this out, right? And it was always, and then we got to come to this point where we was even going to try to arrange to have Kobe on our show. Right? Did you, all we did was announce this show. And Sister Atika Bay, your WPEB, a big turban wearing punk dog who serves white supremacy, came up to our face and said, no. Nah. He said, I ain't about the, what I'm about is money. This is what I'm about, money. And this brother said, no, nah, what I'm about the people. And we ain't going that way. And she 
said, well, I'm about money, and you, y'all promoting Steve Coffey, that's taking money out of my pocket. He said, I get federal funding for this. You see, um, do what you, brother, son. And then, and then she went like that. And, said, that the, and then I was like, okay, so wait a minute. You advertise white stations, and they don't give you no money. He said, you can't tell me how to run my station. I said, okay, he says, look, it's basically like this. When it seems to us, we came to a consensus that you seem to be motivated by the actions of the boule and the anti-defamation league. And that's how we sum you up. And she said, what? How dare you call me up and insult me and say that I'm a white loving boot licking? And I said, see, that's libel. I didn't say that. See, what I said was she was motivated by the actions of the boule. See, so this describes by your reaction how you feel in guilty, being guilty of these, of these crimes. And she said, well, that's the show with you black people. She said that. She said, that's the show with you black folks. Always want to try to get on my show with that radical shit. Quote, unquote. And another thing, too, is, remember when uh, Duck Wait Day King had this? Brothers rapping two weeks ago? We went there and we stepped in Wilsonville behind. You're a roulette. You know what I mean? Now, this is supposed to be a brothers rapping thing. And we ain't about sitting down with traders. You know what I mean? I mean, the whole thing was pointing out who's who and what's what. Okay, so the bottom line also with the show was that the boule jumped on her case. Because they knew we would have been, you know, have been broadcasting. It would have been a year next month. So, you know, they knew we were broadcasting on their station. So the bottom line, they turned the heat up on her. And being that she's about money, it ain't about uh, uplifting fallen humanity to communicate <laughs> about human success. It's about uplifting you know what I mean, uh, the man is through money. And that's the bottom line. So whatever y'all hear in the future about what happened to us, y'all know the real deal because y'all heard it from us. The bottom line is that, you know, this brother, I don't know him as being a general. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, the thing with me is this, I'm a soldier. You understand? It's going to be a time when the rapping is going to be cut out. And we trying to tell y'all, anybody listen to the show, we tell y'all, get your rifle and get your ammo. Because it's, gonna, it's just a bad time when the rap stops and it's time to go into action. So, you know, the thing is, is yeah, we ain't on the air no more, but as long as we can come before y'all, as long as we can still get the information out, because like I told her, I came to you giving you information. I took her to Congressional House Bill where they sat down in Congress and talked about making aid. That's how I got the program. So the bottom line is that we're back out on the street now, so it ain't no problem, because we still want the information out to y'all. But, you know, just don't listen to the lies because we don't know in the future what she's going to say. But we know that the actions by her taking us off the air was motivated because of the pressure that the boule here in Philadelphia put on her. Sure. Rose Handy, yeah. you know, uh, Wilson Good, you know, all the Uncle Tom niggas in the city council, you know, uh, uh, who had the Penn Foundation? He moved that to big time. Who had the Penn Foundation? I don't know his name right now. I don't know that name. Also, I wanted to make a comment of the dynamic brother working in the Philadelphia community, Kabir Haddad, sitting in the back. She did the same thing in this program. What we want to do is identify the enemies among us, you know what I'm saying? And we can focus on it, you know what I'm saying? And um, I just wanted to say Jesse Jackass is going to be at White Rock Baptist Church tomorrow. And like Brother Steve say, it's our job to cover our area of operation. Whenever they come, whenever H.A.T. gives something, we got to be calling them and setting the record straight. That's all I want to say. All right, man, one thing. I just want to thank all the brothers and sisters in the Black Diamonds for supporting, you know, our show and Brother Nadasa's show. Y'all are beautiful. Without, without you, we couldn't have done it. So y'all power, you know. The vibes don't put me on the side with her. I stand alone.
Lord for coming forward. And a brother, a black power brother, remember, let me speak to you during the intermission. All right? Okay. Now.
Yeah, no, I'm on a Long little, uh, look like a TV antenna. Like that's what it is. <laughs> this is a story in, uh, new, this is a story in, in, uh, Washington Post, January 2nd, 1993, about Clinton appearing to have horns on his head on the cover of Time Magazine. Like, if you look at carefully, you'll see the horns. You gotta look for them, though. You won't catch the devil unless you're looking for them. Now you know he's a hoe. There's no doubt about that. He a hoe. He, he, he's in white water right now. That's right. He's being white male. And he talked about it, how USA Today did a story on it, and how many faxes had come in and calls related to Clinton looking like a horn. Arbitrary? Maybe. Maybe just accidental. There was also one when George Bush appeared on the cover of Time Magazine. This is why I need them five minutes. I can line this up for you so you catch it in rapid fire order. I, I want to give it to you that way because I don't want to slow you down with me lining some up. Now, remember, I must have been a vendor. Show you right. Remember how Clinton got to be president? You remember this guy? He doesn't have to be rock. He, he was winning. In fact, he was winning the election with 40% of the vote. But all of a sudden, he just jumped up out the stands and shit and got off the track and let Bush and Clinton run fast. And when they got far enough ahead, he jumped back in. Now he worked for about four billion dollars. What did he say was the reason why he got out of the race? Raised his daughter. Said so they was gonna fuck his daughter up. Right. right. Now, how many votes is that? One. I'm raising the question whether it's the ballot or the bullet. Malcolm raised the question. It's obviously the bullet because all the money he had, he couldn't even buy into the presidency. They forced his ass out the race, and they forced him out with the threat of violence. Now that night he debated that NAFTA treaty, world government, with uh, Gore. Gore didn't bring up no vote. He kept saying, you and your son. You and your son. Yeah, you and your son. I want to remind you, you and your son. All he kept reminding was him and his son, like, in gold, we're going to fuck you up, you know, bow out. <laughs> now you might misread this thing and get caught up in one of these things and not understand what really makes you go round. P Rock. <coughs> Y'all call it parole. Because it be from France. <laughs> not Texas. <laughs> you know the Masonic thing got the double-headed eagles on it. Now boy, she he come out the, the skull and bones connection. He come out the skull and bones connection, so when he was Times Man of the Year, come on back there, boy, get your He was on the cover, he was double-headed. Now, maybe this was arbitrary, accidentally. Maybe, I don't get it. So you're right. Now, I make a suggestion that much of the threat to our community is done symbolically. So we, we have to change our base information, and this is just one copy. There are 10 or 20 different versions. You need to get you a dictionary of symbols because symbols are just as important as a dictionary. A dictionary of symbols is just as important as a dictionary of words. I don't know, something happened here. There we go, there we go, there we go, go, go! Anyway, I don't mean it really. The dictionary of symbols is something you should have. There are 10, 20 different versions. You must be able to decodify the sound community is done symbolically. You are afraid of something that has never happened. Those two 
two words, guilt and worry. Now, when I, if I had done this right, I would start the lecture off with trying to get us to understand who we're talking about. You see, when we talk about the victimization of our people, we're really talking about a group of people who have no guilt for all of the pain they have inflicted. Yeah. Now, there ain't but two, three elements on the planet that can work without guilt. <laughs> One of them is an animal. An animal doesn't have guilt because it's not sincere enough to develop that emotion so they do things without worrying about what they do because they can't feel it. So when we go back to how they describe themselves, we remember when they went to the Romulus and Remus. They did it because they wanted to show that the milk they needed was compatible with an animal. A wolf. Now you know milk don't go down with you. That's because you're not a beast. And because you're not a beast, they have developed lactose soother and all this other stuff to make it go down in case you still want it. But you need to understand what they say about themselves because you will misinterpret it. If you're trying to lay down poisons for a rodent, you better know what kind it is because a rat might be able to survive on mouse on a roach spray. You know, roach might be able to eat rat poison. So you got to make sure you got the appropriate poison for who you're dealing with. Yeah, it's right there, brother. 
Clinton says, seize the moment. But what you don't know is that in this little star right here is a bar chip. That bar chip is unique to your identification, which is in your history right here. This, if you're forced to carry this, this will tell where you are in any minute. It's like a low jack. They're going to put the chip right in the star. And the star will allow them to, oh, where's Steve? He's in Philly tonight. How do we know? We hit him up. Like, uh, you remember that movie Patriot Games? And the guy sitting up in a, in a information trying to decide if the woman in the desert is blonde or brunette. Because the satellites are beaming down. Now that naval reconnaissance satellite shit is right in the edge of Washington, D.C., surrounded by the black community in Anacostia. But the people right here that don't even know what's going on right there. Right there in front of them. So be careful of this thing here. Uh, it's a coming. For whatever the reason. I think it got something to do with something evil. <laughs> I think that. Now that's uh, that's uh, the logo of the boulet. Uh, that uh, logo uh, is what we call the Grecian Sphinx. Uh, when I first saw that, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out uh, what it was. And uh, part of that had to deal with uh, trying to come up with the appropriate word for what it was. So initially, when we started our resolving the mystery of the logo, because if you check carefully, you can see that's a white woman. That's a white woman. That's a white woman No. And you notice that in the face is a circle within a circle laced by a point. Now, if I had this better organized, I'd show you the dictionary of symbols that says that the point in the center of a mandela is never shown, it's just perceived. And you know the draw a circle, we talked about quickly, says it's a circle within a circle. Well, to draw a circle, the center of the circle is the point. Now, if you ask somebody out here serving the wizard who the wizard is, they don't even know. It's only understood that it's there They've never seen it. They know someone's in ultimate control, but they don't know who. They don't even need to know. It's understood. It's symbolic. Never actualized. And they don't want to know any more about it. That's enough. I'm going to serve you. I want, I want prosperity and ambition, etc. So it's left. Now you notice this sigma pi phi, so the tail is in the form of an S. And you know that's an animal's body with wings with a white woman face. And the right paw is up protecting what's inside of the urn. Those all mean something very, very important. Right. <laughs> now this is something that we learned since we were here last. Now, when we started the decodification process, we looked at this symbol. And this symbol seemed to tell us something about what we were looking at. That speaks thing we were looking at. Now, yeah, you have to hold it for me a second. Now, that led us to the definition of a griffin. But I noticed that when we looked at the face, one had a woman, one had an animal face. So it appeared to be some lack of compatibility. Let me have that chair a second. Uh, move this out, use it from right here. Now I can kind of stand out of y'all's way. I just got so much information up here. I didn't know we was going to have this over here. I found out later that brother called Link last night. And, uh, and I prepared it the wrong way. So, you bear with me. I got it up here. You just got to be patient. Give me a second to dig it for you, but if you stick with me, I'll, I can't say I'll do anything for you, but I will do what I know. Uh, this is the definition of a griffin. Pointer again. This definition of a griffin let us know some very interesting things. So you're right. Watch this. Griffin, can you see that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now this is in the video that we're gonna raffle off. Who else need a raffle ticket? Down here, we're gonna raffle off that video of decodifying the boule symbolism uh, that I did in Los Angeles with my 
myself, and I swap places. Now, it says a fabulous animal typically having the head, forepart, and wings like those of an eagle, but with visible erect ears, four legs like the legs of an eagle, and body, hind legs, and tail like those of a lion. Now, check the definition, the second definition of the word griffin, origin unknown, a white person new to the east. Hmm. One recently come from the Occident. Must be Oregon. Occident. What's that mean? Europe. Europe. Griffinish. The state of being a white person recently come to the East. Griffinite. Griffin Park, Los Angeles. Now that was interesting because Griffin Park sits over Los Angeles. That's that hill where you see that Hollywood run across the wall there. Now, if I can find it for you, I will show you what the German word Holly means. Because I understand why the Griffin is overseeing LA because that's the city where the angels got lost. <laughs> Now, that might not make much sense to you, but all of these cities were laid out with symbols and meanings. Nothing was left unsymbolized. Just like Philadelphia is a city full of symbols. Those whites ain't put pyramids on the top of their buildings because they from Africa. And they didn't put it on the money because they ever saw it in person either. They put it on there because they knew it was a symbol of a superior status. Speaking, its meaning is probably confined to the general symbolism of containment, of the enclosed or the concealed. Another piece of the, the caves with the darkness are womb symbols. That the German word Halle, cave, and Halle, hell, are related is not without significance. It's from that dictionary of symbols I showed you. Showing that the word cave and the word hell meant the same thing in German. And these are the cave dwellers. Check. Now, when the man says we are Griffin and we are a white man new to the East, we're, that, 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 what is the East and what is the West and what does that really mean? In the middle of Webster's Dictionary, a white man new to the East. And interestingly enough, when Emmett Scott got made head of the Boule, Oh, show this to Brother Bruce. This is the Detroit version of the black. Uh, when, uh, when, uh, um, uh, Emmett Scott got appointed the head of the Boule, the Boule met in Los Angeles at the Greek Theater. You know where the Greek Theater is? It's right in that Griffin Park. And that's where they had the meeting, at the Greek Theater in Griffin Park. And now we was vibing on that in Los Angeles and we was decodifying this Griffin. When a brother runs in the room, it's on the Pale Horse video, he runs in the room and says, I got it, I got it, I got it. I just got the Boule Constitution and the logo is officially called a Grecian Sphinx. Damn, I was unfamiliar with a Greek Sphinx, so I was mystified then that I didn't know what kind of Sphinxes the Greeks were having. I didn't understand that. <laughs> So that led us to this. I just pulled that constitution out. <coughs> now you gotta be careful because this is what they feed to the children when you ain't looking. <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, man. Uh, brother, tell them what's in this here. They have a whole scenario of Africa laid out being colonized by the Greeks. And it just lays out how they would set the port, to take over the port cities, and go in and just, uh, just take it over, basically. And they would just break down each so-called mystery system, what you might call voodoo, and witchcraft. And they would go into all these different religious systems and just usurp the people and just take it all over. And it's just a funny weed, man, how they said they would just 
begin this uh, bastardization of uh, African cultures. And, and it's a real laid out scenario. It's a thick game. And who's it for? It's really for the rich white kids sitting in their house in the suburb playing these big board game scenarios. And they got one uh, that I, I, I have that really just laid out the so-called ghetto warfare. But I think this is a, this one here really strikes the nerve at it. They would want to play up on this one because I mean look at look at how the brother they got laid up here, the Zulu warrior in the, in the Trojan uh, stands throwing his uh, Greek spear. And, and the way that he's sitting, uh, I mean the way his stance is not only is a Greek stance, but it's a Greek Masonic stance. I'm trying to remember it's up the father. Let me move it up a little bit while Coach is uh, getting this thing together because uh, that stance, whenever you see that Trojan, USC, when you go to campus of USC in Los Angeles, you see the Trojan in that same stand holding a spear. That's a Masonic thing, and they go through their whole right, so called being a warrior for the king, because in the Greek mythology thing, they, only, uh, they had one king who was, died, who was killed in combat by the Persians, and ever since then, they have never had a Grecian king. When you read up on the history of stuff, that you find that Greece has never had kings since this one king was killed in combat, so they have created a class of people called, quote unquote, the Boulets. When I called the Greek embassy trying to get information on it, I kept saying, the Boule, the Boule. And the lady on the phone said, oh, you mean the Boule? I said, well, I don't know how to pronounce it, but just send me some information. And which they have never sent, I sent them a letter and everything, they never sent the information on it. But the interesting thing that she said on the phone, I said, you have societies in America that model themselves after the Greek bully. And she said, yeah, yeah, you know, Phi Beta Kappa is this bully. And that just goes back to what some of Steve's material his research when he uh, digs in and they mention Phi Beta Kappa along with Sigma Pi Phi Boule. And it's kind of an interesting in a weed there because Elaine Locke, who down at Howard University, Locke Hall, well, not only was he a founding member of the Boule, and a Rose Scholar, but he was also a Phi Beta Kappa, the first black Phi Beta Kappa. It's just a coincidence that they would bring that up in the dialogue. All right, all right. Now, so the brother comes into the lecture with the, and I appreciate your patience, brother comes into the lecture with the uh, Boulay Constitution. He got a, a professor at San Diego State drunk. And uh, they was drinking beers and shit, ales. And, uh, and uh, so he sees it on the shelf and gives give a pal another one. And, uh, he steals it off the shelf. And he brings it to brother, drives two hours straight up to the left. He's all excited. He runs in. And the first part of the Constitution is with names, symbols, seals, and colors. Now, interestingly enough, there's only one other Boulay member I've ever got a chance to ask what the logo meant. It was a guy named Bernie. Bernie Gilman, Goldman. He's a doctor. From Columbia, South Carolina, who was very instrumental in bringing the ASCAP convention to Columbia, South Carolina last year. Right now, it's going on in Los Angeles. Well, Dr. Gilman is a Boule member, and he approached me once at a hotel in Atlanta where Dr. Collin and I were speaking together. In fact, Sister Ramona Africa, myself, and Dr. Collin were speaking together at a Revolution 101 conference, which I believe only had one team over there on. I'll make some more next trip. Uh, but uh, I was confronted by uh, this uh, doctor who was sitting with a group of people at a table who kept saying and looking over at me real strangely and insinuating that he really didn't like me. So it was about 40 people in the restaurant. We was at the Yahweh Ben Yahweh Hotel there in Atlanta on 89 Lovin Street. If you're in Atlanta, you should stay at the Bar Clay. It's very, it's just an outstanding black hotel. It's really outstanding. The food is tremendous. The care and safety and security is outstanding. It's right uh, down the street from the Omni. Uh, and uh, he confronts me and he says, uh, brother, I can catch more bees with honey. And you're uh, causing me some problems. And I said, brother, I don't know you. Why don't you sit down and tell me what's up? He said, well, what I need to tell you is that I'm a member of the Boulay. And he said, I'm also a member of ASCAP. And we can use the Boulay to do some very positive things like publish our scholars and stuff. So we really wish you would lay off. So well, why don't you sit down here, Brother Ben, and why don't you tell me what that little pen is on your lapel there? It's a, it was a pen of the logo. 
And he says, I really don't know what it means. <laughs> but I didn't have the Constitution then, so I couldn't judge what he was saying. I thought maybe he had a lapse of memory. I didn't understand what I understand now is that he couldn't tell me what it meant because that would violate a tenet of his oath. But his Constitution told me what it was. And that's where we filled in the gap. And uh, that's where the power of the information, the power of the information comes in. In fact, that's the cover of the Constitution. Uh, we should enter that into the record. Uh, let me put it up so you can clear. Uh, last revised in February of 85, the uh, Grand Boulet, signified by Constitution and Bylaw. Uh, and it's uh, in that section on names, colors, that the uh, logo is described, and it says this. Right there, uh, section one, insignia. The official insignia of this fraternity The official insignia of this fraternity shall be a pen bearing the figure of a Grecian sphinx and urn with the Greek letters Sigma Pi Phi inscribed beneath and which may be appropriately adorned with jewels. In case of loss of pen, that's about how to get another one, upon the death of an archon, archon, the pen shall be left in the custody of his will to be buried or cremated with him. Now, when I saw that, that let me know that he knew more about the pen than he let on because the pen was so important it had to go down on you with that. It's no arbitrary pen. And I see it must be worn on the left side of the lapel. Shall be worn by the archons only on the left side of the vest or shirt. Interestingly enough. Uh, the object of Sigma Pi Phi fraternity is to bring together in close, sacred, and fraternal union a group of college and university graduates of superior qualifications, taste, and attainments. The fraternity shall be organized into a group of subordinate boules whose aim shall be to cultivate and develop among their members the best qualities inherent in one another and to give comfort. Remember Jackson asked for a comfort zone and to give comfort to each other when needed. That's eh, devil worship. We don't use the word hell, oh, we say check. But when they run out of moves, it's what? Anyway, now, so we now know that it's not a griffin, but it's a Grecian sphinx. Now, that compelled me to go away and to find out, in fact, just go backwards a little bit. When you study the definition of griffin in the Dictionary of Symbols, it says, the guardian of the road to salvation standing beside the tree of life or some such symbol. In other words, the griffin, the gargoyle, the Grecian sphinx are all guardian types, protectors of something higher than themselves. They're not the main man. They're the guard for the main man. Uh, it says, blah, 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 associated with signs which tends towards ambivalence, representing, for instance, both the Savior and Antichrist. Now, what you heard when Jesse Jackson was talking was this. This is a symbol of the enemy. The so-called original people knew what they call him. He speak with fourth tongue. Now, when someone talks like this to you, it can confuse you. So much so that you don't move as a result of figuring out which way are they, this way or that way. I've never really been to a meeting, but I spoke at one. <laughs> now, when you're out in the community and you're wrestling towards the beast and they start talking like this, just hold your hands up on them. Get back. <laughs> they say, what's that? Say, you're speaking with poor tongue. I recognize this as the enemy. I will not be neutralized. <laughs> you see, now, there's a play in football called a trap play. The trap play is how do you move someone without blocking them? 
Check. Check. How you move them is you develop a device of play that sends one group left and another group right. And they don't know where to go, they don't move. And all you want to do is freeze them without touching them. And you can do that when you give both sides of the same issue. The hockey do it every day. He gives both sides of the same issue, make you wonder which one he on. That's the sign of the enemy. And they, when you hit up on them carefully, they will do that as a strategy. Don't get confused. You say, I know the formula. I know now who you are. You speak with the fork tongue. <laughs> and I won't be confused. I will move on you. <laughs> right? Check. 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 Now, look up the word space. And what's on the page prior to this is just the word space, but this is under the meaning in space. The sphinx and teeth had the head and breast of a woman. The head and breast of a woman. This is from the definition in the dictionary of symbols for the word sphinx. The sphinx and teeth had the head and breast of a woman. The body of a bull or a dog and the claws of a lion and the tail of a dragon and the wings of a bird. Being the supreme embodiment of the enigma, the Sphinx keeps watch over an ultimate meaning which must remain forever beyond the understanding of the masses. Mm. They say man, I say masses. So that this Grecian Sphinx contains a riddle or a secret which they're never supposed to spill to the people. Yes, sir? The symbol of that Greek Sphinx. When, you, when they had to fall over the top of the head. Isn't that holding the secret into the box? Right, they're holding the knowledge of the circle within a circle in the box. In fact, they're protecting it. And the oath is taken with that hand. So they're pawing it on the urn. The urn has a definite understanding of it. Now, what does that mean? That means we walked up on a group of black men who are not the man, they're the man's man. Hmm. So I looked up in the dictionary of symbols for other pictures. Where y'all go? Come on back here, Grecian Sphinx. And I found some more Grecian Sphinxes. One of them just got away from me. I'll catch him back. And what we found was that we found the same symbolism. That was two of I laid it up here because I had it too so. VCR, he did a TV. Oh, I'm up there now. No. VCR, to the left. To the left? No. Here it is on the TV. In the dictionary of symbols, there was a picture of a Grecian Sphinx. Now, what we're doing now is we're coming up off of the Griffin. Now, if you're a researcher and you're honest with the penetrating of your information, when your information is superseded by another fact, you must change. Uh, laziness and complicity compels one to keep an answer if they think they have the answer and won't let go when the information tells them something different. That's dangerous. That's not straight with the people if you want to serve the people. So we shift it. Then we found the breast, the body like a dog or a bull, the legs, the wings, and the woman's face. So it appears as if the Greek thing had the white woman face, had the white woman breast, had that body of a dog or a bull, had the tail of a dragon and the wings of a bird. It appears as if we found the Greek Sphinx. We checked up with Manly Palmer Hall, who wrote many books on the Masonic thing. In fact, his place is up in Griffin Park, the Philosophical Society. Manly Palmer Hall, wrote The Secret Destiny of America, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. And in The Secret Teachings of All Ages, there was a picture under the title of Initiation of the Pyramid. There was a picture of what he called the Grecian Sphinx. And there were breasts, there was the body, there was the wings, and I guess that must be a woman. Or mm. back. <laughs> you talking about gay go over. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big time mason. Big time mason. Go down to that house of the Mother Supreme down there. They got the gay go over role. Giving honor to all his Masonic roles. In fact, we got two things. 
Before I finish, I gotta talk to you about economic sanctions against non-black businesses, which is where we're going with this dialogue. And two is, I must tell you more about the Boule Copley Convention, July 8th to July 15th, down in Baltimore. Because we must be strong Philadelphia there, because of your ability to get there with a reduced amount of expense. We're gonna line it up. Yeah, y'all? And I guarantee you this, I guarantee you this, if you're ready, we'll have this meeting before you leave to go down there, you prepare your, your remarks for your Philadelphia boys, because I'm going to make them get in the room with you. I guarantee I will make every Philadelphia Boulay member in that meeting get with you for Philadelphia. And every other city going to have a right to get their members in the room too. Or else. There's no arbitrary knock on the door. It took 90 years to get on the door. So they understand this ain't no idle threat. Something else is more powerful than whatever they, all the riddle in the world ain't kept us off their doorstep. And you can see now how deeper we went up into the rhythm. I know now, not only do I know more about the Boulé than any black person in America that's a non-member, but I can stand up some members and tell you I know more than some of them. That's all brother is. It ain't got nothing to do with the brother. It just happened to be something we kept on. And what did we find in the bottom of it? But the hunter. <laughs> now there's something in here that must be decodified. Oedipus and the Sphinx. The Egyptian Sphinx is closely related to the Greek legend of Oedipus. What did Oedipus do? He killed his father and married his mother. Now, stop a minute. It's 1994. The black man is under attack. The white man, for the fearing genetic annihilation with the increasing ozone and the upcoming global warming, decides that he must mix his genes into the black population to, to, to survive the upcoming uh, global connection. Having understood that the dinosaur, the most powerful animal on the earth, did not die because a greater enemy defeated him, they understood that the dinosaur failed to adapt to a changing climate. So it didn't get whipped by a bigger animal, it got whipped by climate control. So now the genetic inferior whites have decided that they will murder their father, marry their mother, and mix their genes to survive to 2050. And in the tape, The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Men, I talked to them brothers about the essence of what they must do. Sister, you may have a problem with brother, but don't let the hunky kill the brother because they will hunky walk for your choice. Sleep with me or die. And that might seem like an awesome option, but that will be the option if the military is off the set. And what are the young black males? The young black males have decided that they will get the OEO boys. We'll get the military. We'll get the police. We'll ring our wagons around them, Coley, while you go around in and get Rockefeller. So when someone tries to neutralize the youth, which is what Jackson and the League of Women Voters come right up out of here, didn't she? The Lord Sutter and Dick Gregory and the rest of them are doing is targeting the youth for the hunky. I know what the hunky wants. He wants a young black male, and they're offering them up for grant money in the anti-crime budget. <laughs> Now, I saw our crazy in that video over there. Who else want to ride for ticket? Because uh, they ain't going to have his brother in the back. Because I saw crazy says that comedically, what this slide says is Lord of the Landlords. Makes sense to me. Lord of the Landlords. They don't own it. They just supervise it for some Mandela's about to be head of South Africa. Only problem is... White's got deeds on 97% of the land. What does that mean? He will oversee. He will be the Lord of the landlord. That's why he got his ass out of jail. And as soon as he get in line up, they will kill him. And his sister waited for him 27 years, and he couldn't stay with her 27 days. Yes, brother. Uh, I have a very good friend who's uh, south, from South Africa, and he's not able to go back. And he said that they had taken Mandela out of prison ten, for 10 years, once a year, to negotiate that he give up the 80... Uh, ADL's ticket that said they would nationalize the land, exactly. Which they gave up to get and 
that's how they, that's why they let him out when he made the decision to give up 80% of the land. And it was Anglo-American Corporation that went in there and got him, which you saw on PBS with Harry Oppenheimer a couple of weeks ago when they confessed that they did everything Dr. Collin ever said they did. Yes, sir. Right? The beers. Now, listen to this. It says that the Grecian Sphinx is keyed on the number nine. Because it goes through that riddle. What walks on four legs, then on two legs, then on three legs. Well, yeah, that went, right? How'd that go? All right, all right. All right, check. But nine, the number nine. The number nine made some sense to me when I looked at the call chart. See, I used to never put the pressure on the undergraduates. I used to never put the pressure on the undergraduates until I figured out that the book on the number nine. One, two, three, four, male. One, two, three, four, female. Four, female. Four male and the boule. Me not. So that the boule's logo, the Grecian Sphinx, wasn't an arbitrary picture. It was a picture that described the only nationally recognized Greek institutions in the black community. Four male, four female, and the boule. The capstone. The godfather. The first of the first. The one that said we use Greek tradition to, because our goal is to acquiesce with Western civilization. See, I thought it was really sneakily an African thing. But now I see it was a Greek thing because getting with the hunky was what it was about. Which is why I put the pressure on the oath takers because I perceive that the reason Ebony, Boulet Magazine, always plays out the various fraternity and sororities is that it's about keeping the spirit of leadership within the combine that must never utter who the Grecian Sphinx protects. You see, what Jesse couldn't do that you heard on that tape was that he couldn't name certain elements because the riddle to the Grecian Sphinx is that we will protect the fair order of the table round. They serve one maiden only, and for her they live through years of noblest deeds. Let me show you. Watch this. Now you understand that meant Alpha Phi Alpha, Kappa Alpha Psi, Phi Beta Sigma, Omega Psi Phi, Zeta Phi Beta, Alpha Kappa Alpha, this, Delta Sigma Theta, and uh, Sigma Gamma Rho. With the Sigma Pi Phi, and they miswrote that. They miswrote Sigma Pi Phi. That's not the way the Sigma Pi Phi write it. Which means that even in laying it out, they mislaid it, so you still wouldn't know who the Godfather was. Some of the undergraduates don't know about the Godfather. Do they teach you anything about the Boulé? I know I've seen the Kappa book. There's one little paragraph that mentions Sigma Pi Pi in the history book. Just one little bit. And it doesn't really describe it. It just acknowledges that the first of this trend was Sigma Pi Pi found in 1904, and period. One paragraph, maybe page six or seven. All of them only have one paragraph describing the acknowledgement. Yeah, that book that Brother Charles is holding is a book written by Brother Brunson, who I went to school with in Northern Illinois, who wrote a book on the Greek, uh, the African uh, base of the Greek fraternity and sororities. And he's out there, he mentions the boule in there. It's a very interesting book. Now, this Grecian speech keyed on the number nine means that the symbolism related to it must have other things related to it. Now, why let's go back. It says here, watch this. The Sphinx is therefore the mystery of nature, the embodiment of the secret doctrine. All who cannot solve her riddle perish. To pass the Sphinx is to attain personal immortality. Now, watch this. Discovering one who knew her answer, discovering one who knew the answer to her riddle, the Sphinx cast herself from the cliff which bordered the road and perished. What does that mean? 
That means that the Grecian speech contains knowledge of certain things that if you reveal what they keep secret, you render their position impotent and they must destroy themselves like a trigger mechanism. You understand why they resist so hard to knowledge, brothers? Do you understand why the sister would work so hard to keep you off the air if you pledge to go that way? Because the people that control her, like the wicked witch of the West, will evaporate when you put the water of knowledge on them. Just like Eveline went when they flushed her down the toilet. You remember when Eveline went down the toilet in the whiz, the black whiz? She was, her song was, don't bring me no bad news. <laughs> Check. 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 But when the little munchkins had gotten rid of that coordinator, what'd they do? They took off the uniform and sang another song. Can you see a brand new day? So you're right. Because, because Eveline, like the others in the story, once their role of protecting and guardian has been revealed, there's nothing for them to do. So if you're a griffin guarding the gate and you didn't got past, the griffin must self-destruct. So the pressure we receive from boule types over the penetration of the information is the acknowledgement that they will lose prosperity and prestige and access to the hunkies if we beat what it is they hold us back from. Just want to let you know how deep the old tinker is in. Which one do I need to know? Got me doing the tennis? Okay, got, got, we got distracted. All right, all right. Now, now. So you, you with me? Yes. Yes. Right, you see that? She's talking about that story. Remember in the story? Now look, y'all watch that with my kids. Saw the same thing unfolded. That when the Sphinx, when they got past the Sphinx, the Sphinx just self-destructed. Now to a child, they might not understand that's fixed into a legend. They saw it. She said, I saw that. Fixed into, not knowing that it's a legend. Top. They have committed the destiny of their race to that legend. Oedipus. They must murder their father and marry their mother. That, that's the only way they can make it across. See, you didn't cross the burning sand. You was already there. Only the mother ones who took on lessons after they left town had to cross the burning sand. That's one of the little things inside the rivers uh, for the undergraduates. Anyway, show you right. Everybody ain't gonna catch that. Anyway, now, okay, you with me so far? Now, to pull this off, to pull this off, there must be the development, huh? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, all right. Let's do this here. I got, I got. I got, it's gonna take me five minutes to get to that spot. All right? Okay. All right, we gotta do, we gotta do one thing real quick. And there's just no other way I can do this because if I don't do it now, I'll lose out. And so I, I'm gonna protect my interests. You, you wanna help me protect my interests? Yeah. There's two things we gotta do. We gotta do two things for the house to make sure everything work out right. Uh, we gotta, in five minutes, take a five minute intermission so that we can get support for the vendors and the other people in here while we get worked out how much longer we can go with the lecture. This is something that just got to be done. Got to do get the iron board out, pull the iron out, heat it up just right, press this kink out. So we're going to do that now. But what always happens after the mission is that for whatever reason some people leave because it prevents an opportunity that they can go. And I don't want you to go yet. What are they doing upstairs? Trying to up, bro. Huh? No, they ain't that smart. <laughs> they wouldn't try that, because I'd go up there and convert them. It'd be big trouble. <laughs> now listen up, y'all. This is what I got to do. I need to pass the half of Brother Copley, and I need
need to do it now before we have the intermission because when the intermission is over, some of you are going to go and I'm going to lose out. So I need you, and this is my thing about this. This is my thing about this. Only contribute if you can, but this is my thing about this, is that I don't like to take a donation until I finish because I want you to give me what you believe I'm worth. And I don't like to take a donation like this without me having finished my lesson because I know I should only get what my value is. But now you're going to have to do a little forecasting here. And I'm, I'm going to pass this hat. If you want to write a check, you can write a check with no name in the page of the order of. Uh, I, I need two people, and I need two ways to do it. One got to take one side, one got to take the other side. And while they're doing that, I'm going to finish this little passageway uh, on the round table group to lead into the intermission, and then I'm going to jump right back into you with, with now that we know where the riddles rely, how we will then break in to them busting in on the African connection. In fact, just to give you a little piece, I want to show you something that will lead you into another dialogue. Uh, in the second half, check this out. In the second half, we're going to get into this. You see that little box over there? This is from the Foreign Affairs House Organ from the Council. Now, Jesse Jackson don't know what the Council on Foreign Relations do. No, it's not the one. But this is their house organ called Foreign Affairs, and that little box over there says, the situation is so dire that one American diplomat said, in five years, Africans will be begging to be recolonized. Mm. Now, I need to show you those things. It's about five or six of those. And what they mean because privately, the hunky is devising that he's going to jump on Africa and he's counting on lack of knowledge from Africans in America from, from stopping it. Because it's going to be done from here, just like going in Somalia was done from here. And it's built on a certain set of conclusions and false assumptions that the civil rights all-stars are going to put in place. And, and this is where I have to go after I finish with you, the round table group. But I got to go. I got to go to the round table group. I got to get into this little part before we do the break. And you got to stick with me. Hold this on a But I got to do this to make it come out right, else I lose out. Compelled to 
to immortalize a fallen member. In other words, when we looked up in Chicago, Beasley, Robert Taylor Holmes, all of these things were named after Boulé people. We didn't know that because we didn't know who was in the Boulé. But then when we saw the immortalization process, we came to understand that the living members perpetrate the dead, and the dead are perpetrated not on value, but on oath. So Charles Wesley says his deeds will never die, his own immortality is secure. At the Boulé meeting we busted in on, they had a whole service for the fallen members, a memorial service there, big on the fallen members. All of the oaths and the ritual folks are. But it was in that, it was in that story that we found something. Now some of you remember this book here, The Anglo-American Establishment, written by Carol Quigley. That book, and tragedy and hope, spoke of the existence of a secret society that was a circle within a circle. That secret society is best described by Carol Quigley, who is a source, a good source, with Harvard, Georgetown, Princeton credibility. See, when you're attacking the whites, it's very important to have a good white source. Some institution or individual that to break or to deny would to break the foundation of white unity. So they love their Harvard. They love their Yales, they love their Princetons, their Georgetowns. So when you call one who's in it as a source for something about it, it becomes impeccable and they change the answer based upon the weight of the source. So Quigley is an awesome way. In fact, when Clinton won the Democratic nomination for president, this is his acceptance speech. You need to check this July 17th, July 17th, in all of the newspapers. Washington Post, New York Times, etc. July 17th, you see Clinton acknowledge that it was Carol Quigley at Georgetown that inspired him into the Rose Scholarship thing. That's very important that you pick up on that. So Clinton acknowledges that Quigley is a viable source, knowing that his only access to the Rose Boys was through Quigley's inspiration. So Quigley is a source that will cut through much discussion about whether or not it was a conspiracy. And who uh, is what? Very important in the computation of the enemy. And what did Quigley say? He said what I mentioned in every lecture about the Rhodes Scholarships and the connections to the secret society. Where's the brother on this side? Oh yeah, almost finished. Y'all catch the people around the back? Anybody, can miss anybody in the back want to make that donation? Miss somebody up front? Sister, I'll just take yours in my hand. <laughs> Thank you, sister. I appreciate you. That's $20, though. You saved that for the year. I see that was $20 old dollar. You probably be the biggest donator in this room, sister. <laughs> so you're right. Some cities do different. Somebody stand up and say, I have $500. Sometimes I do $100. Sometimes I do $100. Somebody say, brother, I don't have anything but a hug. I say, that's the most honorable moment. All right. Let's go on. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Brother Hebrew. Yes, sir. Uh, ask anybody if they need me help today. You go right over there in that corner. I brought Brother Hebrew up here with me from, from Washington. He's half dangerous and he's half straight. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind the 50-50 proposition. I have to have a skill. Did he get somebody in the back? He missed him in the back, brother. All right. The, uh, the, and I'm going to so start off the second half with this video with Bill Cosby on it. Real deep. Real deep. Real deep. Real deep. But this is what Carol Quigley said in his book. Huh? Listen up now. This is what Carol Quigley said in his book. He said that the Rhodes Scholarships established by the terms of Cecil Rhodes Seventh Will are known to everyone. I think I hold the noise down just said so I don't shout too loud. What is not what is not so widely known is that the Rhodes and his five previous wills left his fortune to form a secret society which was to devote itself to the preservation and expansion of the British Empire. And what does not seem to be known to anyone here is that this secret society was created by Rose and its principal trustee, Lord Milner, and it continues to exist to this day. To be sure, this secret society is not a childish thing like the Ku Klux Klan. It does not have any secret robes, secret hand class, or secret passwords. It does not need any of these, for its members know each other personally. Now, my suggestion is that Quigley is an authority on the existence of a secret society that was a circle within a circle. 
Now, what's important about that was, back to the eulogy, listen to me, now I need you one second. Back to the eulogy of, back to the eulogy of Wesley, that's the cover of the Bula history book, the first of the Negro American Greek letter fraternities. I got a bigger picture I'll show you in the second half, by Wesley, and that's Wesley's picture again, he was a history professor at Howard, among other things. But also, in the eulogy to Wesley, we found this one paragraph that I want to share with you before we go to this intermission. This one little paragraph. This is in the eulogy to Wesley. This is a little passage, a mouth of the, for a mighty world. You gotta look at it carefully. On one side is Alfred Lord Tennyson, on the other side Charles Wesley. In that fair order of the table round, a glorious company, the flower of men, who rolled about redressing human wrong. They spoke no slander, no, nor listened to it, who served as a model for a mighty world. They loved one maiden only and lived for her through years of noblest deeds. Charles Wesley, the round table lives only in poetic life and history. They can live again in life and we can make them live through us. It can continue as a dream and it can continue again through us. Now, I'm suggesting to you that the Guardian, Gargoyle, Grecian speech protecting the hockey bullet actually protects the round table group, which you hear talked about in Coleman's book on Committee of 300. You hear it here, you hear it there. But the round table group is the Rhodes Rothschild Secret Society. And we know now for sure that the reason they have never uttered the instruments of these people is because they serve it as a guardian. And then when I go to the second half, I'll tell you about the guards, men who guard the boule, who guard the round table. A circle within a circle within another circle now. A group of lower echelon black men who guard the boule, and the female connection is called the lynx. The lynx. And the incubator child connection is Jack and Jill went up the hill. <laughs> the Jack and Jill of America. And let's go back over to the Grecian Sphinx. There is now the desire to create a new population of people called multiracial. These are the mixed population people, multiracial. The movement is fueled by one million biracial or multiracial people who, according to national statistics, were born in the last 20 years. Across the country, a growing movement of people who do not fit into the traditional racial classifications is gaining momentum. The whites are creating that new population called clear. They're not white. They're not black. They're multi-racial. Oh, he, he's back now. He found out it did make a difference. Remind me in the next half to talk about the extraordinary individuals, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, and Magic Johnson. You need to know something, how that fits into the movie Rollerball, where the extraordinary individual became the threat to the system because the organizations had failed to deliver, and they knew that. So then they only were threatened by individuals who could spark people into other things. Every time the Bulls won a championship, the little black people who could not be driven to fight against the hunky because the organizations in Chicago would do it. It ended up in the spirit of celebrating the Bulls' victory, they beat every hunky they could get their hands on. <laughs> when Dallas won the Super Bowl last year, the first time they had a big parade. The little brothers and the little sisters got to downtown Dallas, they kicked ass. This year they didn't have no parade like that, <laughs> right? And so the extraordinary individual was a threat to the system because the organization's been tied down or distracted, so the extraordinary individual could incite large masses of people for one reason, and then transfer the aggression at a later moment and substitute a new target and become a threat to the system. And that's when they turned to Jonathan and they said, Jonathan, you need to retire. 
You become too big for the game. The people will become emotionally involved in the game. The corporations have taken over for the countries and sports for something to relieve your aggression against authority figures. And every Sunday they got football day, football night, football on Monday, football on Thursday. Y'all be watching it so hard, y'all be tired when the game be over. You ain't even played. And sister, you know brother don't be want no sex when he be watching football and them sports. Because he's too tired for sex because the TV done worked him out. And that's all it was supposed to do is make him tired without lifting a finger. Chad. Yeah. We're talking about that, but the last little part of this is that the multiracial population group is on the move, and every one of the whites have come on board to say they would marry a sister if they had to. I see you out there in a minute. As you can see, that's the New Yorker magazine, February 15, 1993, when the Hasidic Jew came on board and said I'd marry a sister too if I had to. Anybody need a copy of the video, you can call me at area code 215 
And the Ritz Carlton, in fact, they have a Ritz Carlton in Philadelphia. Yeah. Now, tell me if this is correct. Every Ritz Carlton I've ever seen has been inside of something else that is not free to suffer. How is the one here? It's inside a mall. Right. It's inside a mall. The one in Pentagon City is inside of the mall. The one in Chicago is inside of the water tower. The Ritz Carlton logo looks a lot like the Regent Spinks. It's a lion with the right paw. And every Ritz Carlton is hidden within some other structure. It is never free to suffer. Something that is the one on the Well, which one? Avenue 22nd. Avenue 22nd. Avenue 22nd is free to settle. Oh, All right. Oh. And that's the first one I've heard of and I haven't seen it yet. You can go. I will go see it. But we also know that uh, that uh, the lady said at the Ritz Carlton and Rockefeller is there often. He holds many meetings at that Ritz Carlton. Kick it. All right. Kick it off or kick it on? They kicking us out? Oh shit, I better hurt. Who are these people? Where are they at? <laughs> they upstairs? Okay, okay, quick, quick, hold quick. Black man! <laughs> Alright, let's check this out. Quick, ride with me, ride with me a minute. Uh, I noticed that when I got a, I got a history book up here called the, uh, called the AKA's uh, book, right? Notice that the new head of the African Development Bank was the AKA member. We just found out that 75% 75 of the House of Representatives, male and female, white and black, are in fraternity and sorority. 80 of the 100 citizens are in fraternity and sorority. What's important about that is that more than we have ever known, most of these positions of influence may have gone to old takers. We just didn't have the signal to know who was what. That's a good guess. Uh, this is what, this, uh oh, this is the article. This is the article on, uh, oh, the article on Carol Quigley. This is the article on Carol Quigley who revealed the secret society. The Washington Post did a story on it called The Professor Who Knew Too Much. Uh, this is uh, March, uh, uh, March 23rd, 1975, Washington Post Sunday Magazine, The Professor Who Knew Too Much. How will we know where the who label will be when we go to the convention? It's because we got the schedule. You can see where they will be at different moments on Sunday in July. The reason we will know where we will all be is because it's all right there together. We'll all be there together. You can see, uh, you can see uh, every inch of their moment. We took this off of them. We, we took this off of them. In fact, if you look carefully, you'll see writing on the page here. How much you want to get to add up? How much you Okay. Uh, the, uh, this is, uh, you can see writing on there. Only someone in the Boule will be able to know what that writing is. This is the program from the regional director of the Boule. We took his program. And the writing is his writing. Now only he would know that. Only he would know, damn, that's my program. The question was, how do we get so close to him to get it? And I'm going to you and say, we were going to get them. But don't you worry about that. This is the article that expressed us that Wilder used the boule and the guardsmen to organize when he was going to do the fake president day. He used the Greek letter guardsmen, said the guardsmen and boule Greek letter society represent the infrastructure of black America, a fraternal dynamic that permeates the black community. Da -da. Using guardsmen as contact, da -da -da -da. showing you how he went to the guardsmen and the boule, Omega Psi Phi, which is Omega, is one of eight, boule, guardsmen, etc. Just showing you, this is November 23rd, 1993. What's uh, Washington Post, 91, I'm sorry, yeah, correct. Uh, very important. Uh, this was a little boule, oh, that's the brand boule officers. You can see, uh, let's see, is anybody here from the Alpha Boule? It's in the national, uh, national leadership. No, no one else in Philadelphia presently in the national leadership. This is uh, what happened at the Boulay that's getting on the camera now, so you understand what I'm doing. This is uh, the layout of the Boulay Convention that was there at the Ritz Carlton that we penetrated. You can see that it was uh, led by Clifton Wartime, who was Deputy Secretary of State, who was recently fired. Uh, next page talks about Ron Brown, and met at the State Department in the Ben Franklin home in The Masonic in the Ben Franklin home, an uh, eighth floor of the State Department. Okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, here's a cover of a recent Boulé magazine, the Boulé Journal. One of the latest, you notice they got children on the cover. They're penetrating the young. The Boulé's goal is to move into high school, grammar school, and influence the young into being Boulé type. 
The war is on not for the hunky and for the talent of the black community, to protect the black community. They recognize that they need to get to the young. Sigma Pi Phi Salute and Sunny Graduating Scholars of the Boule Foundation. This is where ASCAP, the African Classic, wanted to go to the Boule and greet the Spirit Board and get them the finance they used to the and, and other scholars of ASCAP. And I suggested that no African Classical could hang out with the black Greek Boule because that's a contradiction. And you don't want to be labeled like that. Yeah. from the Army Spy Project that showed that Ennis Scott, that Ennis Scott worked for Von Iman, who was associated with Newton of uh, uh, Victor, Secretary of War, and it was our, our most Booker T. Washington successful at Tuskegee, came aboard at the C.P. Rowan of Nashville, who sent Loving a list of potential black informants and troublemakers. Loving wrote Von Iman, Mr. Church of Memphis, one of the wealthiest men in the race, and put me in touch with prominent colored men in each of the largest southern cities. That was the Boule. The Boule became the network by which military intelligence chose and picked informants and labeled troublemakers. We'll spend another day getting into that. Uh, this is uh, what I want to show you with Robert Cook. Robert Cook. Now, who else the video uh, What's Your Mother's Made Name? We need to do this quick. You gotta bring it up and let me use the second. I gotta put it in the video. Cause I gotta show the audience this is gonna trip you out. This is uh, Robert Cope and Bill Cosby being re-reviewed uh, when the I-5 thing. You know what the a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. So Bill Cosby in the show plays a role scholar. That's unusual, but interesting. He plays a role scholar. And interestingly enough, playing a role scholar, he, uh, that's kind of ironic that it would be such a thing. Got to make sure this is going that way. Okay, but we got a zoom in. And then we got the zoom in. I need to check. Here it comes. All right. Uh, no, I'm going to go like that. We've got to go. We've got to fast forward. Turn it, turn it off and fast forward it uh, into the lecture. It'll take a while to get to. Yeah, there we go. This is uh, Bill Coffey on the cover of the Omega Sci-Fi magazine. He's Omega. In fact, when he spoke, either it was the Temple or the University of Maryland, the New York Times put it on the front page with the Omega Signal. I'm not doing it because I got stuff in my hand, but he did the Omega Signal in front of the people, and the people didn't know what it was. But I just want to show you that he's a part of the network. The network. Alvin Clark, Jesse Jackson, and all from the Omega. Yeah, a lot to do with Tyson getting locked up. Right, his daughter. Right, his daughter. Cosby's family always had drug problems. But I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe he was talking about when he was on that boat with, with Hugh Hefner and they were doing cocaine. I don't know. This guy really go fast. Yeah, Matthew Johnson, Michael Johnson, Michael Jackson. Now, I was kind of doing it before y'all cut out. You would get the essence of it again is that these individuals could threaten the system. In that movie, is it going forward? Huh? Okay. Make it uh, show up. Okay, and just push it fast forward from showing up. Put the screen on. Okay, now fast forward while the screen is on. No, I'm trying to do that. Not the old one. Not the old one. All right. Okay. Uh, now, I, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because I don't want to, they're not going to get us. We, we can beat them three to death, we ain't going to catch nothing. But you can just see that there's a lot of pressure being put on blacks with money. Craig Hodges with the Bulls is winning second championship. He joins the nation, the Bulls drop him right after the second championship. He's the lead three-point shooter in the league, they can drop him because of his value. Byron Scott got let go from the Lakers because he showed up the Lakers in L.A. He stood up and said that I would suggest black people not to riot or rebel. They need to do whatever they believe they need to do. The L.A. Lakers announced the next day he must have made a mistake with that announcement. He meant to say he stands for nobody riding. Next day they unconditionally released him. Luckily he got picked up by Indiana Pacers. You're looking at a situation where in the spirit of concentration, the ones with the money are being compelled to shut up and don't linger or hang with any of the hungry people. 
Because they must isolate them now in the stage of development. And uh, that process is concentrating or forcing them into a concentric circle. Now I got to do this real quick. While y'all doing that, I got to drop something on you Africans. This is, uh, what I got to drop on you Africans is this little piece right here. I'm going to get back to them extraordinary individuals in a minute, but I don't want to leave this out. This is the New York Times, April 18, 1993. Sunday Magazine, April 18, 1993. One and eight is nine. April 18, 1993. Uh, New York Times, Sunday Magazine. On colonialism is back now, it's not too soon. Let's face it, some countries are just not fit to govern themselves. We are witnessing today a revival of colonialism, or better, the new form. It's a trend that should be encouraged. Now, New York Times printed an ad on one of my soldiers, and the ad said that they were doing something they didn't like, and I knew they were doing this, I would be mad to them. Because understanding that what my person was saying was actually convicting, conflicting with the goal they had expressed. They wanted Africa back. So how are you going to go to Africa and kick the hunky's ass when they want us out of Africa and put the hunky back in? So New York Times took the ad because it conflicted with what they were doing. They want Africa. They don't want us to have Africa, let alone have a retaliatory mechanism in Africa. But when you don't use the science of the enemy, you end up having to do other things that will not compel the enemy to where they are. I highly suggest you get that tape confused. The distraction between blacks and the really. Because every time that shit come up, it don't do nothing but distract shit. That's what I know about it. It don't never get to the bottom of nothing. It just keeps repeating the same old mistake and come up with the same distractions. Yeah, quick. Huh? It's only on the tape. Uh, anyway. Ah, uh, see, it's going, got, 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 yeah, pass that, keep going, in good shape, in good shape, it'll be right there when I need it. Now, now, check this out here. You might not know about Marcus Garvey in Africa, right? Marcus Garvey didn't like all the people I'm telling you about, Cecil Rose and all the rest of them. This is Marcus Garvey, so I'm going to you got one of them, y'all? Yeah, got one more thing. What's that, you need to change this? Yeah, I need to change it. You gotta get them out the box. You okay. gotta get them yourself. Okay. Alright. All right. Uh, uh, the uh, philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. You gotta get them out the box. Yes. Okay. This is, uh, yes, Tony Marcus. This is Cecil Rose, another white man that has, and uh, the native Africans won on the west of South Africa, but Cecil Rose, another white man, robbed and exploited them. And today the diamond fields are owned by white men who are practically reduced the native Africans who won on the land of slavery. And by the system of forced labor, compelled them to mine the diamonds and other minerals and to live on reservations, herded together like cattle, under conditions wholly unsuited to human beings. The British Empire owes its present financial existence to the wealth which has been recruited from Africa. The wealth that we Negroes could have controlled 50 years ago when there was not so much interest in Africa. It is only within this period of time that Italy, France, England, Portugal, Belgium have started the wholesale colonization exploitation of Africa. It's Marcus Garvey. But check out Garvey, name and name. If the oil of Africa is good for Rockefeller's interest, if iron oil is good for Carnegie Trust, then surely these minerals are good for us. Why should we allow Wall Street and, go, and other capitalists to set the earth? Then he goes on in the next page and names Rothschild, Rockefeller, Carnegie. He calls all the names. Now, why was Garvey calling those names? Because Garvey knew no radio, no TV that was the enemy. All these years later, we still ain't caught the same people. In fact, the way they got the thing going, you think it was Garvey versus Du Bois. It was Garvey versus the Humpy. Du Bois showed up. <laughs> That's right, that's on page uh, 66, 67, 68. Right, got some extra stuff right in that part there. Now, the hottest thing on the New World Order dialogue against black people is this story right here called The Class of Civilization. By Samuel Huntington wrote The Crisis of Democracy for the Trial Island Commission. That class of civilization says that the world will come down to a fight between eight major groupings, or seven. And he goes through Islamic confusion, this and that, and he gets to the end and says, possibly Africa. And the reason he says possibly Africa is that if you can follow in the CFR, you will know that in an earlier issue, they had said that they would, as I showed you earlier, they would beg Africa, Africa would beg to be recolonized. 
which meant that what they were trying to say was that they were putting a mojo on Africa, and Africa might not be around that again to be a civilization to fight against the enemy. Heavy, heavy, heavy. In that story about the uh, colonization, I gotta find the uh, back part to that uh, colonialism is back story, which is just up here in my head. And the reason I wanted to show you the end of that story was what it said. In fact, I got the real copy right here. The thing I wanted you to notice too, which I said in the warm-up, this is the cover. This is the cover of that uh, New York Times colonialism is back story. You notice it adds up 22 and 11 is 33. The two women's numbers are 2 2 and 1 1 that go to TV Yellow Hands Company. Okay, this is the picture that goes with the story. And you can see them big benevolent white hands. It's what I call the hidden hands. Every time the whites want to show power, they always use hands to describe the symbology. Big white hands with little bitty black hands up against them. But I just want to tell you this for strategy wise, what does it say about the destiny of black people? This is white people, all white people talk. This is what's scary, man. Get them breath in their name. We ain't on we ain't on point. And it says here in the story. This is the last part of the story. And I would show it to you on overhead, but it got away. I think it's sitting on here somewhere, but I ain't got time to get it. I just gotta keep on going. It says here. It says here that it says this time when we go to Africa, we're not gonna run out like I'm getting the sixties when we ran out after colonialism was over. This time we're gonna stay and we ain't gonna leave. So that how long are you gonna stay? It says the mandate should be a limited duration, maybe 5, 10, 20 years, for example, and subject to supervision by the Security Council, and the ultimate objective will be to take constitutional measures to ensure reform to affect the self-government. The trustees should not plan to withdraw until they are reasonably certain that the return to independence will be successful this time, so the mandate may last 50 or 100 years. This is how long they're going to take over an African country to make it solid. It says African problems are problems of some states outside of Africa are not created by colonialism or demographics or natural disaster or children's credit. These horrors, including famine, are created by government, bad, incompetent, corrupt government, usually all three. In other words, this is the no white involvement in the destruction of Africa theory. That the white men they had shit to do black just some fucked up on their own. If this, if this was only can be aided with lack of information, the only a dummy would not stand up and say, well, hold on, man, I'm keeping score. I'm glad y'all saying three strikes that you out, because I'm going to fight out a whole team of you motherfuckers. <laughs> All right? Now y'all count. Then it says here, that for more than 30 years, the international community has treated symptoms, not causes. The basic cause is obvious, never publicly admitted. Some states are not yet to the government for themselves. Their continued existence and violence and human degradation they breed is a threat to the stability of their neighbors as well as an affront to our consciousness. This is a moral issue here. The civilized world has a mission to go out to these desperate places of the government. Now, can you imagine New York Times calling up one of my men saying, how do you please? I said, please, yeah, kick your ass, little dog-ass monkey. You can look up here perpetrating and taking an out to disguise yourself as a civilized people. Since by civilized world, we also miss to include other potential trustees like Germany, Japan, Russia, China, India, Trustees, these are people that are taking Africa to supervise Africa. Let me repeat names to you. China, Russia, India, uh, Germany, Japan, they take America, taking them so they can work up how to contain the people they're going to be hurt, don't you? It says here, listen to this, this is the key part. If done firmly and confidently, such state building will prove popular. It is important, therefore, that the first pilot project should be carefully chosen and its trustees experience. Somalia is an obvious first choice. So is Liberia and perhaps Haiti and Zaire. Now think about it in your mind. All four of the countries are destabilized to the point that the hunter can show up like he's going to say it. He's got to set up. Why are they sending their seed back in? Because they got a plan to take it over, not put it back. And he all fucked up. He worked with the Pope and shit. <laughs> AT&T's version. <laughs> All right. Uh, making 
a start will not be easy because it means scrapping the easy assumptions of decades. Once again, the already overburdened United States will have to take major responsibility, though it can count on soft support from Britain, and in this case, from France. Labor and expense will be needed as well as brains, leadership, and infinite patience. The only satisfaction, listen this, the only satisfaction will be the unspoken gratitude of millions of misgoverned and ungoverned people. What is unspoken gratitude? You don't have to say shit. Uh, you might be saying, ouch, ooh, no, not nah, off, oh, I heard. They're saying we're going to turn the noise level off, and you ain't going to hear a nigga thank you. You just got to remember, this is unspoken gratitude. That means they don't need you to say shit to make it come down. You don't even have to ask them say you need it. Now, that's, that's the level of arrogance that demands no, nothing left in retaliation. The only satisfaction will be the unspoken gratitude of millions of misgoverned and ungoverned people who will find in this altruistic revival of colonialism the only way out of their present intractable misery. They will find this altruistic revival of colonialism is the only way out of their present misery. Meaning that the hunky is going to offer up colonialism or death. That's all. That's all. And now in the meantime, the civil rights law stops are distracting you so that you don't come to a conclusion about the enemy before he offer you this option. And then he's going to keep killing the brothers and turn to the sisters and say, sleep with me or die. Remember, you do the men, then the women, and the children. Yes? All right, you get there yet? We're getting close, we're getting close. We're getting close, we're getting close. You may go to the TV there and have line something up for you. Uh, now, you should get this magazine, because it'll tell you something. And then in the meantime, here we got, here we got Randall Robinson as part of the Rockefeller Foundation's Greater Voice for Africa Project. Trans activists is preparing a report that will attempt to provide a consensus of thought on constituency mobilization and coalition building around U.S. African relations. Can you imagine he went to Rockefeller, the enemy, the one that God told us would try to take our land. He went right to him. He went right to him. Dead. Okay, he put him. All right, watch this. This is the opening to the I spy. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's right, you got to stand to see it because it's so trippy. This is the good life while I left you in Los Angeles. Somebody brought this video back to me said it, it wasn't no good. But the found out that they got on giving they bring a video back after the first night. You change it for another one. Instead of saying I need another video, I don't have money, they come up with telling me, excuse this is about as clear as you can get. That's clearer than what you can get. Right, I'm going to tighten this up. This is the opening. This is Coffee now getting his assignment. He pulls out his old deputy bag. He's going to clear it up. The video man is going to clear it up. Okay. Now he's told his wife he's going to a convention. He lies and gives her a false excuse. He's going to the convention. Now he got the little gun. The white boy got the big gun. Right? Now he's going through the process of preparing to go to Washington. When he gets there, you can see that the secret spy thing is hidden in the Department of Agriculture, whose chairman just happens to be Esther, who's a bull ass.
with the white boy. Uh, I don't want a TV. 
on the TV, boom, 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 strike out. Uh, all it was was back to that little box where it says they serve one maiden only. And that's what dawned on me when they said, what's your mother's maiden name? Just a little side about the day after the lecture, a brother who shot the video went to the doctor's office and he was filling out the form and said, mother's maiden name, you wrote Boule on it. The doctor came out of his office, came out to the waiting room, and pulled the young man to the side and said, said, all right, sir. So he said, he said, look, I noticed I look very carefully at the mother's maiden name. Can I shake your hand? Uh, oh. right. And so now we think that when we be hollering at the Boole, I say, hey, Sigma, I say, Boole, I'll be hollering at a little answer. Now I think we ought to say, hey, what's your mother's maiden name? <laughs> that might be like, uh, it's still no help for the widow's son or some shit. <laughs> that there must be some kind. We got to go now. I really appreciate you all being, oh, rap, rap. Where the raffle bag at? Show you right. Where the raffle at? Abby, where's the, where's the, where's the raffle, where the video at? Brothers got one video? Brothers go. Yeah. Tell me what videos I got left up here. We got a black and Jewish terminal in the 90s and a female there. I got to give away two more videos.
combined, this is the Economic Sanctions Committee, 60% of all goods are sold in November, December, and January. 60% of all goods are sold in just a three-month period. And if we didn't buy, come on, so you got to hold it down. Now, that's twice on you. Three strikes and I'm going to jump you. <laughs> listen, listen, come on, man. The, uh, the, uh, the Economic Sanctions Committee is responsible for building the force in Philly that assures that there's no frivolous buying in the month of November, December, and January. We're doing it now because we need to get that far out front. Because I'll tell you, along with the Africans came out against me, but I'm now sanctioned against the white, telling me stuff like the white men are retaliating or some shit. Dumb shit. But we need to have in every city a pressure group that develops the no frivolous buying from non-black businesses for November, December, and January, based upon a continual uh, from the very beginning of the hunky showing up, unmet demands for justice. And this is one form of retaliation for all the things we talked about. No frivolous buying, November, December, and January. The brother will have a list over there. I need as many people as you can to agree to go forward. I just really messed up. I was really negligent in not coming to you this because this is the active component to the dialogue. Everybody want to know what to do? For 90 days, all you got to do is do nothing, just hold your money. We know you're going to spend with rights, I can look at you and see that we can spend for rights. We have to understand them. But we must hold our money back, and that 60% is this marginal profit. We need to stop it. We need to do that. That's important to me. It should be important to you. Which one is this? 427. That was the last video. Where do you go? Here it is right here. There you go, brother. The conference is July 8th to July 15th. You can sign the same list and just put conference next to it. That's up for me to give you the details. I salute you all in the spirit of the Bulldog. That's how they got it. That's how we're going to get it back. So my brother's grown red up. That's right. I appreciate you. I'll see you next month. I'll be back next month. I'm also coming back up here next week to go around to the Masada Temple. Some of you have asked to meet. I'm going to make myself available one day next week. I'm going to come up from D.C. We'll just sit a bit. I asked Dr. Day, y'all have to tell me what's the best day. Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, let us know what's all that when we come to that. All right. Thank you all very much.